beginning, there was nothing. And then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. I gotta get away with this. No! Say, man, you got a joint? Uh, no, not on me, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. <laughs> That's true. Sometimes I cry. Oh! Miss my butthole, he laughed. <laughs> From the strangest corners of the internet, here to bring you opinions of the world from an altered perspective, here are your hosts, the Drunken Peasants. Hey, welcome, Drunken Peasants Podcast, okay. episode 966. Do Doing it live on a Tuesday. It's just me and the fridge. Can you believe it was 300 episodes ago that we were doing episode 666? Was it? Wow. Just yeah. 300 episodes ago. It, yeah, that is hard to believe. We're 33 episodes away from 999. That's going to be weird. Yeah, it's going to be like just, you know, warming up for 1,000. 1,000. I've been talking to, hopefully things pan out for like... Mr. Holiday to show up and for Mr. Hannibal and Mr. Monty to show up. We might have to set it up they're, so it's they're over interested. the weekend. Yeah, we could set it up a certain way to make sure that it accommodates everything. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we uh, if, uh, if Hannibal and Monty show up, we can show them around some places. We can give them yeah. uh, back massages. Yes. All of that is <laughs> is on the table. I want to let everyone know that isn't aware uh, all of the patrons $50 and up for the month of December are getting one of these awesome shirts. You can get one. All you got to do is be signed up during the month of December. You can change your pledge or cancel your pledge after that uh, if you if you want. But you might want to stick around because you there, might want there to could be a follow up shirt for the month. after. There could be another shirt available. Oh, no. um, yeah. Cute. Check it out. It helps support the show a lot. Uh, this is just obligatory now as we wait for YouTube to uh, let everyone know that we're actually streaming now. Yes. So we'll, we'll, we'll continue to mess around for a little bit longer before we get into the actual topic of uh, that is occurring. Yeah, we, tonight. Have, to, we have to like uh, splash around. Splash around. Dog paddle. Yeah. All right. So everyone wants to do this, so I'm just going to get this out of the way. Oh shit, and you know what? Check what? check this out. You're gonna like this. Hi, Billy. Billy is amazing. Billy is amazing. Billy is amazing. Billy is amazing. This is all true. Billy is amazing. Billy is amazing. Oh Billy is Streamlabs amazing. Streamlabs thinks you're amazing. Billy is amazing. It's true. Billy is amazing. It's Billy is true. amazing. Billy is amazing. Billy is amazing. So true. Billy is amazing. <laughs> Billy is amazing. You should have gotten multiple ones of them. Family. To sound like a crowd. I was I was half expecting they were all going to have their faces turned into King Cobra's face. And yeah. It was going to be poot, 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 poot. Poot, 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 that was even more charming. Endearing even. Thank Everyone, you. please like the stream. I'm glad YouTube notified you. We're going to get into some stuff. We're just kind of... Getting getting prepared. Yeah, we're warming up. Yeah, that's what we do here. We warm up constantly. It's uh, Tuesday, so it's the kickoff of a brand new week. For a those kickoff of, of a brand new week. A brand new day. For those of you that might not have watched Saturday night, we went five hours, and we had uh, a crazy ending we just we we were we were on fire the yes last, last couple of hours got weird yeah <laughs> tonight everyone who's a patron 25 dollars and up hang out with us in the discord server after the show ends to discuss what we're doing for the private shows that are coming up 
uh, later on this month. Help us out. Tell us what you want to see. All right. We're, we're going to have to set up this next actual mania. And King Cobes is the world champion. Yeah. Right now. So we have to think of good opponents for him. If you're if you're not, if you're not uh, in on those calls, if you're not one of the, the booking committee members, start spamming your ideas and chat throughout the night. Maybe one of them will see it and run the point play in for you. You'll have to see. You never know. You never know. All right. We're going to start now. Antagonism is underway right now. Touch me, DP. Are they gonna touch me, DP? I can't believe they broke it. Yeah, you guys broke our family, family. family. <laughs> uh, are we on uh, dark mode right now? Uh, we. Family, 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 family. All right, uh, <sighs> here we go. Welcome back. Family, 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 family. All right. So uh, Nick Fuentes was on a conservative podcast recently. Yeah. And uh, the the interview that he did was very interesting. And after that, we'll get into some of the behavior of his fans, uh, not not just about the podcast, but also uh, the the last episode that we did. Some of the fans were not happy with us. No. And I feel really bad because all I ever wanted to do was impress Nick Fuentes as fans. <laughs> <sighs> the first time on You Are Here, Nicholas J. Fuentes, the host of the America First podcast. Welcome to the show. Hi, great to be here. We're happy to have you here. You had to drive. I know you're on the uh, on the no fly list, so you actually had to drive what 14 hours to get here. <laughs> yeah, 14 or 16 hours. It's, uh, it's been a long time on the road, so <laughs> just to but dip in. Here. But He's here, uh, but obviously a little background since we have a new guest. Uh, so, Nick, this is your first time on the show. I mentioned a little bit earlier. We just filmed a podcast that released today to really smashing reviews uh, called The Most Banned Man on the Internet, The Untold Story. And it's uh, the longest episode we ever made, like almost three hours. Uh, I am curious. How does one get on a no-fly list? Yeah, so there was a lot of friction between this woman that is one of the hosts of this podcast and Nick Fuentes. Her name's Sydney Watson. Yeah. I think it might be Paul Joseph Watson in a wig. It's not. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. In the capacity sure. that you are. Well, that's just it. <clears throat> you know, they don't really tell you anything about it. They don't tell you you're on it. They don't tell you, you know, if you're off it or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I could speculate why I'm on there, how I got on there. I think it has to do with the fact that I was at the Capitol on January 6th. I wasn't inside like Elijah, but I was on the grounds. Like I was there at the at the Trump rally, and so <laughs> he's just calling out know, the I guy just, there. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 I, th I think there's like a fourth guy that hasn't been on screen yet. Elijah, there's a, was he there's two other guys here. Yeah, and and I think we know why he's on the no fly list. Uh, a couple months before, or was it a month before the January six? He was uh, giving them crap for not wearing a mask on the plane. That's why, yeah. yeah but fact, he doesn't mention that. He doesn't want to say that. He's like, I think he it's tweeted because it out of, too. Everybody knows about. Yeah, everybody it. knows that you were on the plane, refusing to wear your mask, made a big. Stink, I don't know why. And they put you on a no-fly list for making a stink. Assume it has something to do with that, but I, you know, honestly, I don't even really know. You just get on it, and then they don't tell you. Yeah, they don't tell you if you're on it, and they don't tell you when you're off it. You just and you can still buy tickets, but you can't print the pass, right? That's right. Yeah, so I could buy a plane ticket, but you just can't print the boarding pass and get on the plane, or so even this get. This is like security. a new phenomenon for you not being able to fly. 
Right, yeah, and, and that's just it. You know, some people, they got put on the quad S list, and so it's more difficult for them to get on a plane. I can't board a domestic flight, international flight. I can't fly on a plane in America. You could fly if you had a, uh, like, a, a personal jet. He got banned because he got kicked off a plane, and normally, especially these days, that's that's what will happen. Anytime you All it takes bicker. is one time. Anytime you bicker about your mask or whatever, it's like it's like... That's it. They're they're done. So you gotta be careful. Yeah. Joe almost got kicked off a plane recently, and he was just he was just being a sweet boy. <laughs> I don't. I I could see that happening. But I don't know if you guys know. I was gonna ask you. You guys both have shows. Are you guys preparing to do your shows in the metaverse? This is funny because they get into like sex dolls and stuff <laughs> from the metaverse. Up? On that, or like, yeah, yeah, I prefer well, to do it sex. in the metaverse. Yeah. I kind of hate like being on camera, you know, because I like to my just Amazon roll out of bed. Basically, couldn't process packages due to the outage, so I sat on my ass for ten hours today. Yeah, Damn. there was a big outage. Uh, Taco Bell app was out. Magic the Gathering card spell table was out. Amazon was out. These some of the most important things in the world were out today. That's fucked. Basically, <laughs> and just go live, start a show. So. I like it. Maybe I'll see. He said he just likes to roll out of bed and go live. So that explains his appearance in that one video we watched. Oh, yeah, he did roll out. But also yeah. he wants to be in the metaverse. So when he goes to pick his nose, it doesn't show up. It's and he just, won't bleed, too. Yeah. Just, <laughs> the, the blood won't come out. He can eat out. his own bur boogers from osmosis. Yeah, you're going to see his hand going like this the entire time on his metaverse. Change like, my Nick, avatar. What are you doing? Make it a little taller or make it a little taller like that. He would Nick's, love Nick's, that. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Is this listen Nick? to this. Listen this is to cat this. girl Nick Fuentes. Listen. Maybe. Face when it came on the screen was like, <laughs> I, I would. Well, I mean, you know, it's just that women have gotten to the point in America, sort of to this insufferable place. And so, you know, the robots coming in, it's going to introduce some real competition. I actually think maybe this is not the worst thing for American <laughs> society. You know, it's maybe the, the women are. Take are going to have to become more feminine, more woman-like compared to the robots. <laughs> but who's buying the robots, though? It's going to be men, of mm. course. But they're it's lesbians. It's going to be Nick. It's well, going to be Nick and all his fans are going to take out a, a ride share on a, on a sex bot. And they're going to have to clean up the, the naughty parts in between uses when they pass it to their friends. And they were all like, Nick is going to buy one. And then listen, <laughs> to, uh, listen to his response to that. Well, I'm not, hey, I'm not buying a what robot. I'm Catholic. Catholic. <laughs> I'm Catholic. <laughs> Catholics don't believe in robots. Hey, it's okay. It's not a sin. It's a robot. You know, that's true. I never thought of it that way. I wonder if the catechism addresses that. Vic. In 2019. <laughs> I wonder if the catechism addresses that. No, the catechism does not address sex robots. No, it doesn't. Well, this, I mean, like, it would just be considered masturbation. This Sidney Watson kind of looks like a uh, dark-haired Amy Schumer to me. Am, am I tripping? She's not as uh, big of a girl as Amy Schumer. Real Doll famously She's created Harmony, a, face. Mini, a bisexual flavor AI sex doll with an animatronic head and Scottish accent. Is that the well, accent, lads, that you would pick on your sex doll, Scottish? Nah, it's kind of a coarse accent. It's kind of like a <laughs> masculine, you know, like imagine a woman. I even like a real human woman. A Scottish accent is masculine. Yeah, what, was it a, a bisexual Scottish butt? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Is, is, is I don't it, know. I think it's kind of masculine. It's bisexual and Scottish. Is that because it's got a bag and pipes? <laughs> With the Scottish accent, it'd be a little, <laughs> a little brutal, I think. Uh, I'm a little brutal. And it's just uh, Groundskeeper Willie. Like, yes. Give me a dick. I'm coming to fuck the lot of you. <laughs> You're yes. not married. Right. You know, you, you know, I'm not a big fan of the females. No, I'm not a fan. <laughs> Explain to me why. <laughs> well, yeah. because because I'll, I'll tell you why uh, before he does. I like dick. Because he he's really short. Needs to fly someone who could smuggle little shrimp Nikki in the overhead <laughs> yeah. bin. Yeah, he's a carry on. He's a carry on passenger. Nick is short, so the chance of him getting a, a decent woman are immediately destroyed. But also, I don't think he's interested in women. Nope. Well, you know, I, I feel like I am sort of the real inheritor of the legacy of, you know, great geniuses, philosophers. I point this out. <laughs> You're literally a twerp version of Archie Bunker. And he was a comedy act. I don't know I if might... you know this. He was the butt of the jokes. I show off. And when you think about, like, Aristotle, Thomas Aquinas, Schopenhauer, they all had a very specific take on women, which is that they're sort of like the inferior gender. And I point this out on my show. You know, if you believe in the Bible, if you're a Christian in the story creation, 
man is created in the image of God. Woman is made from man's rib. Which is total trash and bullshit. People are made, we know how people are made. They don't come from ribs. And there are a ton of women out there who also believe that men are superior to them and they want a superior man. And Nick Fuentes, you're nowhere near that. You're a fucking tiny manlet, dude. You're a beta virgin. And so when you think Not about the it, virgin th- shame. This way, the genesis of a woman is really from a piece of man. So how can a woman have comparable faculties or superior faculties really in any way to a man if she's in made many from ways, In many ways, women are superior. In many ways. We have to stop trying to uh, compete the genders against each other. Their when, faculties when they, when they, in uh, many ways are superior. When they really, they really complement each other. They have superior faculties. A man's superior, rib. Very so, superior faculties. Oh, you know, I'm basically just against this whole, you know, some people say they're against feminism or third wave feminism. I'm against this whole feminized society. I'm against, because we really live in a third. You want nothing but masculinity around Probably you. feminist world order. You're effectively and I an e-girl. The- you just want big floppy penises smacking you in the cheeks everywhere you you're go. a tiny little thing you're you're a small <laughs> doll you're a tiny little small doll thing that has beta orbiters you're an e-girl nick fuentes the whole thing you know people say patriarchy this and that i'm probably even more extreme than that i just want to return to you know the old the old world the old way of doing you things. wouldn't make it in the old world You'd be a peg boy on a ship, dude. You'd be a cabin boy. <laughs> that's that's the best you could be is somebody's hold a peg through while they're off uh, high seas fishing. Women don't drive, don't vote type of thing? Or yeah, something like that. I mean, right. approximating like Saudi Arabia. I don't think they're too far off the mark. He wants, yeah, he wants women's rights in America about on par with Saudi Arabia. Yeah, which I got bad news for you. Women are wrestling in Saudi Arabia. Won't be long before they're also free. I don't know about that. <laughs> they just earned the right to drive there like ten years ago. Yeah, or not even. Not, yeah, it's less than a decade. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I mean, you could potentially go and live in Saudi Arabia then. Well, I'm not Muslim, so that's well. Sweet. You can't fly <laughs> that too. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. that as well. Yeah, yeah that would actually that is challenging. That's an obstacle. Can't get on a plane. I mean, you I guess you can take a, a yeah, you can take a boat. Yeah. You can't they even go no, to Saudi Arabia unless you're invited. Like, is you there a no boat list? Yeah, true. Uh, I don't know if they do that. <laughs> the, the no barge list? Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'd have to maybe go down to Florida, get on a cigarette <laughs> boat or something, and no try and get over there. Do you want to get married? Yeah, I want to get married, but more out of necessity of like having producing a male heir is really a male heir. I bet you he'll be five or six kids deep before he even pushes out a, a boy, if that. He's, he's going to be all girls. Uh, and that and that's when I'll believe in God. <laughs> I'm like, God, God cursed this little fucking chauvinist. Yeah, with it's all up to women. him to put out the chromosome that makes a boy. I just don't see him doing it. He's a five <laughs> foot no, I'm nothing. Just, I'm just listening. I'm he's just a tight. Observing. He doesn't <laughs> have going, boy juice in him. He can't like, we can keep score going. out a man. No, he has boy juice in him. <laughs> yeah, but you know, his <laughs> juice ain't producing no boys. I mean, I I would prefer to get a handle on what you think from your mouth. That's very Chinese of him, anything. though. You know, just only men, so he doesn't want any female children. It's very Chinese. Yeah, yeah, no, I think they're definitely they're awake on this question. Chinese woke on the uh, male children question. Didn't they lift that though? Uh, I read something, I don't know to what degree that's been lifted. You know, I mean, as far as... They do have an out-of-control population there. It's like marriage goes... Well, it's more about population control there rather than, you know, getting rid of women. Well, and it's like the old world stuff about like a dowry and like, you know, gendered stuff and all that. But, you know, at least for me, it's sort of like a pride thing. He's literally a regressive. (laughs) Like, he literally wants to regress... Back hundreds of years almost. He's LARPing the dad life like he's ever going to be daddy. You're an actual baby, dude. You're, you're not going to have a male heir at this rate. You're going to be lucky if Lady Maga knocks you up. Oh, they, they talked trash about Lady Maga at one point during this show, but I didn't clip that part. Like, yeah, I want to produce a, a-, a jab at CPAC for having Lady Maga yeah, and yep, Caitlyn Jenner. Yep male heir to take on my name take on my legacy and all that it's really sad when 
uh, Caitlyn Jenner is a more respectable person than you, because Caitlyn Jenner <laughs> like has some total trash views, um, like horrible I, views. I think Caitlyn Jenner is not that much better than Nick Fuentes, but better yeah. enough. Caitlyn Jenner is a, a fun, a f- nice, fun woman. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, you know, marriage is sort of pursuant to that goal. But, you know, I don't know about this whole prospect of, like, living with a woman for the rest of my life. Like, you know, it sounds good at first. It sounds, like, kind of fun or interesting. You don't have to do laundry. You know, you don't have to worry about kind of taking care of the house. But, you know, then the prospect of just, like, it goes on and on and she on. Is and not decade impressed. after decade after decade. And, <laughs> Look at Sydney Watson's you know, eyes I, flare. Yeah, she's like, what? Because he's like, oh, yeah, then you got to put up with her decade after decade after decade. She's actually biting her lip right now. I don't know how thrilled I am with that, with that whole idea. Physically biting her lip, waiting for him to finish tying the noose around his neck. Someone said Jenner murdered someone. I don't know if she murdered someone, but she was responsible for someone's death and didn't face any consequences for it i think it was more like a manslaughter kind of thing she was an olympic gold medalist you can't go to prison after you become an Olympic gold medalist. <laughs> yes, you can. every medal is one get out of jail free card yeah. <laughs> you know i'm i'm kind of a solitary individual i like my privacy I'm i like my autonomy and I just like the, the idea of like boy. nagging nagging gf nagging wife Nagging a little GF. nightmarish to me. Do you have me. a good relationship with your mom? I, oh, we're getting like Freudian now. With your mom? Tell me about your maza. Tell me about your maza. I love my mom. Yeah, I love my mom. Mm-hmm. Does your, is your mom a stay-at-home mom? What's, what does she do? Yeah, she, well, so she works now, but, um, you know, when me and my sister were growing up, she raised me. She quit her job to stay at home and raise us. And what's your full-time. sister like? Do you get up with her? Uh, yeah, she's my twin. Uh, so Fuentes is a twin or something yeah. I learned. Um, she's probably the opposite Is of she me. She's single? more calm, sort of uh, introverted. Um, yeah, but we get along. Do you respect women? Of course. But you just don't want them to have any rights. Well, I didn't say that. I okay. didn't say they shouldn't have rights. But if I'm understanding your question correctly, if you don't want them to vote or drive or, or have an existence akin to what they would have in, say, Saudi Arabia, you would say that in large part, then they don't really have rights. Well, I would say probably the ideal is something more like Afghanistan, if I'm being totally honest. Like re- <laughs> so recent, what, what's the recent difference between Afghanistan, Afghanistan then and Saudi Arabia? <laughs> like the brutality, I guess. It's like a little slightly more brutal. Of course, Taliban rule, not not American rule. I'm talking about, you know, recent, recent so Afghanistan. So you want women to have the same... He's talking about post uh US involvement in Afghanistan. Yeah. He wants he wants it at that level. Yeah. And now he's going to go simp for Afghanistan. Treatment as women have under Taliban rule in Afghanistan. Something approximating that. Okay. Yeah, because you know, you think about the Taliban and you know what they're able to achieve. Here you have these guys with nothing but you know, some light arms and rags and 20 years, and they were able to defeat the largest military in history. I think that has something to do with the fact that they weren't, like, distracted. So <laughs> so uh, the, the insurgents in Afghanistan were able to defeat the most powerful army, the, the U.S. military, because they weren't distracted by no you know, women. Yeah, they weren't distracted by women. Uh, also, Those women's also had something to do with the most powerful army um, just leaving, <laughs> and uh, and the twenty years of reliance on said powerful army leaving those to take over, not prepared, and not really caring. They kind you know, of all just stepped aside, like whatever. But they weren't distracted with the kinds of things we are in America. They weren't being nagged. You know, they weren't being bossed around by. Women And, you know, now they've got this society where there's this brutality, like I said, this old world sort of order. And you bring up like voting. I don't see really voting as a right, if I'm being totally honest. Like, it's not just women. It's not a right. There's a lot of people that really shouldn't be voting anymore. Such as? Um, You know, maybe people that don't own property, uh, young people, people that work like retail jobs. People who work retail jobs. Yeah, if you work retail, you should not be able to vote because your your opinion doesn't matter because you scoop rice and beans at a Chipotle. 
I States. was in Lowe's earlier and a young man helped me who's actually a fan of both of us who was super lovely and I would like him to vote. He was great. He was very clever. He was great. He was well, a fan of both of us. Well, you know, the thing us. about retail or these service jobs is like, you know, you look at these young people, it's a lot of millennials, Generation Z, and they really don't know how things work. You know? You mean like you? Yeah, I don't, they don't really know how things work. Like um, relationships young. with women, which I comment on all the time, though I've never had one. I don't know how they work. You know what I mean? I like do if, know that if my wife did things my mother does for me, I'd be more likely to share the same roof with her. You, Not the same bed, though. I'm Catholic, a.k.a. <laughs> gay. Own a business, if you own property, even if you're a homeowner, you kind of have an idea of like how things work, you know, like where things come from and some some idea of like how the economy works. And, you know, if your whole life is like, OK, you're in school, you're a student, you pay mm -hmm. rent. You know what I mean? Like you don't even you don't even manage like how your apartment runs. Like how should you have a say in how the country is run? You don't even really know how anything comes together in society. So, you know, the old way in America was that. It was, of course, propertied white men. It was a very, it was a very narrow group of people that were able to vote, and that's because the founding fathers didn't really believe in mass democracy, universal suffrage. They believed in checks and balances, and kind. Of you mean like black people not voting, right? Oops. Black people and women not voting. Three fifths. You know, voting was a part of like checking the power of the of the ruling class or the regime with the power of the people, but. You know, they weren't under any illusions about this idea that, like, every person should have a vote. One man, one woman, one child, one vote. You know, they didn't believe that. So, um, you know, that's not how the country was founded. That's not how the system was set up. And that was for a reason. So I think it was that's a big mistake exactly in the past. That's not exactly how the system even works today. Like, it's not one man, one vote. It's, it's a whole convoluted system. So maybe it is time for an update, but... I don't think taking away power from people is the answer. Years to just <laughs> open it up to everybody. You know, we have to think about how we're going to have competent government and who's going to make those choices. And, you know, we have to think competent people should be making those choices. Quick, quick. Competent people, not retail workers. Everyone he likes and no one that he doesn't like. We live in a time where millennials are the most over, uh, educated, most educated, and most underpaid Here, individuals in history. Here's uh, <laughs> here's the women saga of of Nick being on this show. Whammin. You also promote like the way of interacting with women, and I go, "Have you been in a relationship with a woman?" No. So how are you telling other people how to behave towards women when you yourself have not had any actual physical, you know, interaction with them in a romantic capacity or, in fact, in any capacity where you, you know, uphold them in a way that treats them with respect? I mean, if, if you're out here arguing that women are basically half the value of, well, you know, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, in fact, because that's not right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you are looking to some other regimes around the world that do think that women are half the value like of a man, Saudi I have to Arabia. question what kind of a person who's had no experience with women is in a position to, to you know, basically promote these ideas and then well i'm having yeah oh he, yeah this then this. he goes on to say well i'm having an experience with a woman right now yeah <laughs> an experience with a woman right now <laughs> and i've had lots of experiences with women in my life not not romantically per se but you know i've, I've talked to enough women i've been in you know i've known enough women to know sort of what's going on and i think any to man who is observant on. enough and honestly you know like i said we could go back to great geniuses we could go back to people that have been in relationships like a perfect example is like the pickup artists you know have you ever noticed that pickup artists who have the most relationships with women and the most sex they Do what they, they say is that really with women it's the same bag of tricks uh to seduce a woman or whatever and i think that kind of tells Let's reverse the genders here. It's more so the same bag of tricks to literally seduce these world leaders who continually get honey potted. Why were there so many videos and photos of princes and rulers with Jeffrey Epstein? It's both ways. Humans are succumb to their desires. And these are the people that rule the fucking world. You want to take power away from women because a couple of dickheads with birds on their parrots on their shoulder can talk them into giving them kisses? Pickup artist is stupid. <laughs> Every damn human being is a self-serving, greedy individual when you find out what they want. And this is exactly a, a stupid point to make against women when fucking kings and queens get honeypotted all the time.
see something about the nature of women that, you know, you go from woman to woman and it's the same kind of like little tricks, little things you could say or whatever to kind of hack them and whatever. And I think that kind of says it all about their nature. So what does it say about our nature, Nick? Well, it says that, um, you know, they're not fully rational. I don't believe that like men. They possess a sort of full rationality. See, if you're going to be a conservative, uh, chauvinist speaker, there is like a way to be on this side of her and and answering these questions that's going to actually drive her a little crazy. She said she's a men's rights activist. Yeah, like (laughs) it would be very easy to win her over right now. That's how wormy and unmanly Nick Fuentes is. She's trying to fight for his rights, and he's such a worm. He can't even win her over. You suck, Nick. <laughs> um, I think that... Uh, rationality towards what, specifically? Well, rationality just, just, just entirely, generally? sort of objective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think they're capable of that. I think that Nick knows you know, his male audience. has a real... It's pathetic imp- beta males that look up to him as a source of masculinity. Oops. Uh-huh personal sense of rationality and reason. I think that a female sense is far more personal and... You know, that derives from the fact that women are made to bear children. You know, women are made with their wombs to bear children. And so I think they're... And men are made with their muscles to protect the women while they bear the children from goddamn wild animals. Nick, you can't fight your way out of a paper bag. I'm worried you're stuck in that Hello, suit you're boys. wearing. Take my pesos. Hello. Also, oh. Nick is a moron. I hope this lady brings up cat boy. She doesn't. She does a terrible mistake. She doesn't. Not she to. Did, probably didn't know about. Yeah, she has it. no. Idea. She didn't know who Nick really was much yeah. before this. Whole consciousness is basically, it's wrapped up. It's bound up in this idea that they've got to carry a child and then raise a child. And I think that their the impersonality. <laughs> she, she does not look amused. Rationality, objectivity no. suffers from this. Um. Here is the next but part. You do of this. have some sort of bizarre opinion towards women that might not be based in reality, but rather from, I don't know, maybe a negative experience, maybe trauma. I don't know what your background's like. And I'm saying, like, maybe maybe there's some issues here that well, need to be unpacked. I have, a good, I have a good example Especially of this. for, you know, some of your audience. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that they've not had particularly nice experiences in life so far. But rather than, uh, you know, going into the world being angry and trying to bash people because they don't 100% align with you, I don't understand how that's pushing the envelope or helping anybody. But that's not it. We're not we're not bashing people Dude, because do they don't align. you read the stuff that your people say? And they, <laughs> they make it personal too they're not saying you've got a shit idea they attack mom, you as a human mom. being see this is did he just say mom mom help what, me mom what was that i think he said mom because he's never had a conversation with a woman like this and without without it being his mom hold on trying to bash people because they don't 100 percent align with you i don't understand how that's pushing the envelope or helping anybody but that's not it we're not we're not bashing people Dude, because do they don't read align the stuff that your people say and they, they make it personal too they're not saying you've got a shit idea they attack mom, you as a human mom. being mom mom, he said, mom. mom. whenever he gets nagged by a woman and he goes back to his childhood and his mom nagging him for being a twerp. Oh, my God. He really said, Mom. <laughs> mom. Hey, this, is, this is what oh. I'm talking about. It's just sort of like this, like, <laughs> don't you think that's problematic? Like, don't Zero you think Ron says she low-key called him incel. Uh, no, no, he low-key said he was. Yeah. And, like, me. or It's like... You know, listen, we don't have time for political correctness. We don't have time it's not about to being politically correct. It's pander about to the feelings of women. Of the population. We're not demonizing them. Listen, we're more based than anybody. Do you read your own comments? Than anybody. Do you read your own we're comments? We're more based than anybody. Are you aware of how these people feel about, about yes. women? And women's just the example. I'm sure that they have Wait, shitty I, opinions I actually, towards I actually, a myriad I actually of other wanna, people. I, I want to cut it. Did Maybe in a friends. couple of years, Nick, you'll be able to just drop your sperm into a thing and then a baby will be born. No women required. You can do that already. <laughs> much better, yeah. It's like, I see that uh, instead That'd of just be much like, better. Yeah. Yeah. Much better. What? In, where are the women going to share? Your bedroom in your mom's house? Like, with, like where are the women going to, you know, you want them in the kitchen. Which kitchen? Where... Who's giving them the kitchen and like? Yeah, this is a great point right here. He's talking about how all these guys want to run shit and be the men, but they're living in their parents' basement. Last uh, Saturday, we had a whole spew from Nick about how it's okay to live in your parents' basement. Multicultural households are the future, but this is what women were supposed to expect under Nick's rules. They wanted their kitchen. They wanted their house. They wanted the home to make. And and Nick would go out and and pay for the home while the wife stays at home and makes the home. Yeah, that's a homemaker. That's what it was all built upon. 
You can't have that right now. Nobody can afford that. No, it's it's not a thing. These guys aren't going out and earning enough money to pay for it. I I worry about too with some of these like younger movements. It's very based in form, but not always based in reality. Yeah, no, I think it is based in reality because you know again you have to. It's all contextual, which is to say that you know look at the society that we live in, which is like this insane, shrill, shrieking feminist society. And it's within the context of this where my show is a place where it's like men talking about women, how we really feel, not not pandering to them like they're a voting block, not pandering to them like we need, like we necessarily need their approval or need to w win them over or something. My show is a show for men. My show is a show for men. Here's but it's little boys watching a little boy LARPing as a man. Here's a little more on his audience. And I do here. want to say, like, I actually, I, I've said, I do know many of your views on women, which I find abhorrent. I'm going to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, I don't agree with you in any capacity um, on that front for obvious reasons. Yeah, figures. Um, but I actually went into this reasonably, like, not really knowing your broader, um, you know, views on, on things. And so I'm actually, I don't really have an opinion of you, if I'm honest. Um, and so that's why, I mean, people, it's really funny. People are like, Sydney's really triggered. And I'm honestly just sitting here just listening and just, uh, you know, getting a feel for things. But I was saying to Elijah, it's interesting. You, I think you're being very respectful. Um, and, and it's and I think that's really nice because people make you out to be this, you know, assassin that's going to just. Oh, stab he would be if he wasn't face to face with people. He's an assassin from his uh, little tiny desk. He talks so much trash from his desk. He's out in public now. He's not surrounded by a bunch of uh, meatheads that will protect him. Isn't that just, he's a wimp. That's why he's being respectful. He's afraid not to be. He's a pussy. Pussy. <laughs> um, and I think you are being very respectful, and it, you know you're obviously very polite in person. But dude, your followers are are, are very interesting people. Yes. Um, oh. And I find it I find oh. it interesting how you appear certainly one way in person. Mm. Um, and I would say you're, you know, you're, you're nice in person. And Thank then, you. you know, in the chat. Thank you. you Guys, I, I have a new girlfriend. <laughs> she lives in Canada. <laughs> Her name's Sydney Watson. And she says I'm nice in person. I don't understand. <laughs> um, are you aware that your followers are like this? Well, you know, they're very uh, animated, you know, very enthusiastic. Mm. The thing is, is that. <laughs> the thing That's one way to describe them. About our. How about highly regarded people? You know, me and my they don't followers have any is that male father figures in their life, so they look up to me, a human ventriloquist doll. See, like, they're so insecure that this shit, any video we ever make about Fuentes gets flooded by, it gets posted somewhere on a, on a forum or in a Discord server or somewhere where, with Fuentes fans because they look around for people talking about him. And then they come here and say, they all say the same shit. Like you'd think it was just one person with a bunch of sock accounts leaving a bunch of messages. And I know, I know how this works out. I know I've been on the internet for many years. Uh, you guys watching right now that are seething and angry that we're talking down on your little hero, uh, you're going to realize probably in the next two or three years how pathetic you were and you're going to come back to us. And you're going to be like, man, these guys tried to tell me and I didn't listen. Don't worry. We'll be here waiting for you when you're ready to grow up. Uh, we'll be your daddy. We are really oppressed <laughs> in a big way. And so you really can't divorce this. We're really from oppressed how in a big we are. way. I mean, they're when oppressed. you take a look at my. Listen to him say they're how a marginalized he's oppressed. Group. Yeah, listen to how he says him and his groipers are marginalized. I'll or the Groypers or somebody like myself. I mean, we really have been treated unfairly by society. And, you know, some people say, hey, you know, your followers aren't very polite or, you know, they're very rowdy or something like that. I think it's, I think it's more like than that. that, Nick, though. I think that they, like, for example, they they attack Elijah personally. They attack uh -huh. me personally. I don't There's think a phrase for it being called groiped, right? Am I that's right? right. I don't think that. Got groiped. <laughs> that's mean, right. You got groiped. Right. People who've been horrible to you personally, and that's mm -hmm. completely fair. If right. they, you know, want to go for them, fine. My brat but army. If, if, We're going to gripe you. Ha <laughs> ha. That sounds dirty. If I'm just asking you questions merely to dig into your viewpoints, which I think is a fair thing to do on a show like this, mm -hmm. I don't know why anybody would turn that into a personal attack. I don't know why anybody would turn that into a personal attack. I because don't get they it. have nothing else to go off of. All they are is little vicious, angry, no real points to be driven. 
I've, I've talked with a few of them over the last uh, couple of days because of the last episode, and I keep asking them to bring up their points, make their points. What do they, they want to get do. out of it? They have nothing. They're like, cope, cope. And I'm like, okay. You're seething. Have a Copa Cola. I don't really care. I'm doing just fine, papa. One day y'all come back and you'll realize I was daddy all along, and I'll pat you on your head and say, you know what? It's time for you to learn how to flip a burrito. I'm gonna get you a job at Chipotle. Gotta, gotta son. get it. Like, and if and if you do think you are oppressed, which is which yeah, is but that's fine. what I'm getting I, at is that that's why there's sort of a defensive posture. Is because sure. you know if you look at my experience and the experience of people that I know, it's um, you know being subject to horrible lies and slander, and so but Nick, all you know, of that's us are though goes. in this space. Yeah, Nick, yeah. literally like, everybody is subject to horrible lies and slander. And your little groip union, these getting groiped, they're. Throwing lies and slander out to everybody who brings your little name up. So you're saying, you know, we've really been oppressed. So we get to do the things that we're complaining about being oppressed by. Okay? No, you're brats. You're twerps. You're not men. You're LARPing as some sort of action unit. You're a bunch of memers that are tired of sitting in their little basements. They go outside to have club meetings. And Nick Fuentes in the house. Yeah. It's a call and response parade of nerds. That's all your movement is. Apparently quite on the he's same a terrorist. level. Dude, have the stuff that this kid's been exposed to. I'm- Look, I love his high water pants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, he's on the same level as. But well. I did have a federal credential. He had a federal credentials. Alex Jones said something similar, but he also came to learn that the power of what he was saying influenced other people. Mm. So while you may be a little more rational and measured, it seems as though uh, the following you have built doesn't understand when you're being satirical or you're making a joke. So do you have concerns that maybe they're going to ruin your message? Not really, only because, you know, I really have no control over what happens after I tell the message. And, you know, once again, we can get caught up in like— But isn't it your movement? Yeah, it is, of course. So shouldn't you have some sort of control as someone in favor of authoritarianism? Well, I mean, I control like an organization (laughs) and I control the messaging that comes from me and from my show. But as far as like what my followers take from that, I can't control how people respond to it or how they interpret it. But I do laugh um, at the term getting griped. When you get griped, I I condone it by laughing. You condone it. Don't pussyfoot now because you're getting the the light shined on you. Own it like a grown-up. Or bitch baby out of it like you are right now, you little bitch baby. Grow I up. don't necessarily think that's the responsibility of an author or of a speaker or something, of a truth teller. That'd be one a thing if I was teller. like a politician or something, or if I was leading a club, you know, if like my club member, if I was leading like... I mean, it has a name, it has a flag. It has a bunch it, of nerds that didn't yeah. want to wear their MAGA hats anymore since it was a losing brand. They put on their America First hats. It's all it, the only change. Hi, this is the Groiper Club, members only, and some guy was out there saying, hey, you know what? Um, you know, and he was a representative of something that I led. That would be one thing. But, you know, me going and, and doing my show, I don't even know who's watching it. I'm interested why you say um, that. He doesn't even know who's watching his show. I don't even, he doesn't. He doesn't care about his fans. He knows how pathetic they are because they're looking up to him. He knows how pathetic he is. He doesn't want to hang out with you guys. I see uh, Spexo at the meetups, and his eyes are he's so... always kind of like, yeah, yeah, nice, nice to yeah. see you again. Oh, nice to see you again, tall one. Now I'm going to walk over tall here away from beard. you. I'm going to walk away, and then you see Spexo's eyes, and they're like, <gasps> Oh, I that got Nick. I got hmm? noticed by Nicholas J. Fuentes. That Whoa. Nick. Oh, oh, daddy <laughs> noticed me. Oh, wow. Every time, and it's like, dude... He doesn't respect you. Why can't you look at me like cat boy? Yeah, but you know what? That's exactly how an e-girl keeps her simps at a distance. All these white knights for Nick are living the the, the little it tier is a three type sub. Of simping. It's a tier three sub simp for Nick You're- Fuentes, the the new alt right e-girl. <laughs> for you and your following are um, oppressed. Well, I mean, just take a look at what's happened to me in particular over the past five years. I mean, I'm probably the most censored person in America or in the world. I'm banned from the I'm so thoroughly banned. I talked about this on Slightly Offensive. You can't even search my name on TikTok. Like, I'm banned from TikTok, and you can't search Nick Fuentes. It says that's a hateful term. (laughs) 
I am interested. Why are you, I get the I, when you say oppressed and the fact that you that you have been depersoned, mm -hmm. I think is I think is disgusting. From but I want to know disgusting. why your audience I is literally oppressed. Everything. I <laughs> why my know, audience? Why well, are they oppressed? Because you know my first of all, we have attitude. You know, we've got grit. We're real sort of like we have attitude. With attitude. We've got we have grit. grit. Let's be honest here. There are uh, other people that have been removed, like Nick Fuentes, Alex Jones, and Leafy is here. I, I, the only the, grit they have on their fingertips from typing on keyboards. This is shit. not some political martyr syndrome. These are people who messed up. Leafy's not even political, and he got the same uh, response that Nick and Alex Jones did. So it's not a political martyr bullshit. We're not going to go to that. You break a couple of rules and you get ousted. You try and skirt the rules on a different platform, you eventually get ousted. There's a reason you're not on DLive anymore, let alone YouTube. I think that's kind of what people like about us. You know, firstly, I'll just say, you know, some people say, oh, his hands bend in very strange ways. Did you see that? Yeah, it's because he's a male twin to a girl twin. Look at that. Yeah, a male. Ah! They say what is that? They say male Ooh. twins have inverted bitch fingers. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know what? I get called dysgenic by his followers all the time. What is this? Oh, this is a genetic trait you desire. Obviously, he drove fourteen hours here to the studio. Okay, and, he, and on the way here, he got his hand shut in the car door. That's that's all that is. <laughs> Oh, that, no wonder he picks his nose freak. so much. What a freak. He's got an extra angle to get up in there. He's got like a, I would pick my nose if I had that extra angle. I'd be able to scrape a boogie off I've been trying to hit for months. Some people say, oh, well, the Groypers are too antagonistic. I think that's the reason why people like them, because we're, we are energetic. We're not like these baby conservatives that are, you know, they show up to these college Republican meetings with like their pocket protector and they're like, I really like Josh Hawley and I like common good originalism. And Groypers are like, you know, it's America first, bitch. And like, we like that. But <laughs> it's the America reason why they're oppressed is these are young guys. These are young, virile, like it's in so many cases, teenagers, teenage, 20 something. <laughs> What a surprise. A lot of people think they're mostly white. There's a lot of Hispanics. There's a lot of black guys. They're mostly guys. And, you know, their whole lives, they have been oppressed. They've been oppressed by, you know, their parents, their libtard parents. If their parents are divorced or overbearing moms, oppressed by the education system, oppressed by the media, everything's been taken from them. Their movies, their video games, the women have been alienated and turned against them. Everything's been taken away. Their movies, their video their games. Their movies, their video games. Uh, yeah. It's been taken away. It's been taken away. They mean by tons. like wokeism in, in Hollywood? Is yeah, that what he means? Yeah, of course that's what he means. Okay. But there's tons of content out there that caters to the, the unwoke. Okay? Just because you have to deal with Captain uh, Marvel showing up every once in a while. There still was like five white Chris's to, to, to pick through of, uh, before that. Like one woman shows up with some superpowers and the other five white Chris's aren't good enough for you. Come no. on, dude. Come on. What are you, baby? What are you, baby? Can't eat your fucking peas to get to your little steak, Papa? <laughs> Nick always is smirking like it's like with solutions. If I were to ask you, like, let's start with rights. Okay, let's start. Let's start with with access to something very simple. Let's go to an amendment. Let's go to 19th Amendment. Mm. Right? Let's start there. Let's just start there. Gone. All right. Gone. All right. Day what do you one. thought? All right. Day one. Day one gone. <laughs> it shouldn't be there. It I have a question, there. though. Have you ever lived in any other country besides the United States? Nope. Okay. So when, so when you talk about many of these things. These so are when just you talk about just about everything, Nick, you're talking out of your ass with absolutely zero experience. Am I, am I to believe that? Oh, yeah. No. Never been with a woman. Never been to another country than America. Sometimes I say Saudi Arabia's got it right, but I have no idea what I'm talking about. Because I'm an idiot. From but I have an idiot followers that have even less life experience than me. And they look up to a little twerp like myself because they're little twerps in their own right observational standpoint where you've done a lot of reading and observed a bunch of things yes and then arrived at your conclusions based on that yeah but you have no practical experience living under say a more authoritarian rule no well i mean i already live under something like authoritarianism in america you know? yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> no the problem is 
You're LARPing as a man and you can't be one because you're five foot nothing and you're a complainer. And he he does support authoritarianism and he's like, oh, China's got it right. But he's like he lives under it in America. He has no concept of what actual authoritarianism is like. Yeah, even if even if you weren't a foot taller, if you were just like, I don't know dashing or 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 cute or or handsome or 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 or, i don't know intriguing there's a multitude of other things you could be and you'd look at women in a totally different way because they'd look at you in a totally different way that's the problem here you only see women because they're looking at an actual manlit twerp I'm on the no-fly list. I'm being persecuted. I'm a crime, The thing baby, is about authoritarianism is it can't be condemned in itself, you know, because the, the character of the regime isn't really authority. The authority is colored by the Hold people on. that are that are in authority. Not to interrupt you, sorry, but just to back up for a second. So you're currently on a no-fly list based on the authoritarianism that's going on in the country. Right. Now, that authoritarianism, you could argue, is from the left, and the left are very happy that they have that authoritarianism. So what you want is a right-wing authoritarianism. Yes. But your issue is with left-wing authoritarianism. The problem is not authoritarianism. So what, so the what, problem is leftism. What about the people on the left who think of you and go, well, I don't want to live under his rule of law? Because obviously there are people who don't well, think like this you is do. The We're not essence a monolith. Of Mom! Politics. Mom! This is the essence of politics, is that there is an us and there is a them. There sure. are right-wing people and there are left-wing people. And, and I want to point out, for all the Nick Fuentes fans that are watching, when Nick says there is an us and there is a them... The them he's talking about is Antifa, and the us he's talking about is you. And those of us in between look at you both as fucking weirdos, okay? Both sides are weird extremist dorks. So when you, when you see him say us versus them, realize you're being looked at by the majority of the world the way you look at Antifa. Think about that. Let that settle. You know, people have varying identities with different levels of salience. But, uh, yes, the problem is that we are not in control of the regime, uh, ultimately. The problem is not the regime itself or power, the because regime. the thing is, and, and this is the problem, is that conservatives are sort of naive about power. Power, you know, is not, we're not getting rid of it anytime soon. We're not getting rid of power anytime soon because we're not moving out of the power's house anytime soon. So they need more of it. Because he the power still brings us hot pockets and cleans our room and does our laundry. You know, the power. Mom! For most of my life, conservatives in America say that they wanted smaller government, but Nick just unapologetically wants big government, but right-wing big government. Yes. But in any case, to get back to the to the original question, which is about experience, I don't think that I need to live in Russia to know that we would rather have right wing people running America than left wing people. You know, I just I think that's kind of a asinine sort of thing, which people like to trot out and they say, well, you haven't you know, we could qualify it well with all kinds of things. But the way that we live in America is unacceptable. I mean, there's homeless people everywhere. The crime's out of control. It's Have you seen Russia? You're just talking about how Russia's been yeah. in America. No, he hasn't seen Russia. Yeah, the, he's never been there. Watch some dash cam footage. I have to wonder if he's ever left the country, ever. There's two things I know about Russia having never been there, okay? Those people are absolutely ballsier than Nick Fuentes and his entire group ever could be. They jump in front of cars for money and they they literally walk across like tight ropes building to building like like there's no tomorrow that you couldn't do that with these kids they, they got private security and little, little crybaby uh power and numbers to pick on purple hair girls at protests it's it's pathetic it's a corrupt country it's a failing country and um Plenty you know we want to have countries around leadership. the world that have right-wing leadership still have many of those issues and in Oops. fact they're exacerbated oftentimes Oops. by the governments that are in power so look at her with her hand on her head like this like i'm really over here talking down on uh, conservative ways just to try and bring this little sucker out of his hobby hole in his mom's basement to show him a little bit of the real world. She's almost, she's almost wants to pity bang him just so he knows what it's like to be with a woman. Cause if, if, if he got pity banged, unless, you know, he is the closet case we joke about one pity banging and he would simp out for any, I woman. saw, uh, I saw her on Twitter 
like yesterday talking about how much she doesn't like him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, and I would say too. I mean, I think it's a bit of a straw man to say that what I'm arguing here. I'm not even. I'm not even arguing. I'm just posing questions, really, mm. because I'm interested to hear your viewpoints. Um, however, I'm not saying. I mean, I agree with you in the sense that we should have, you know, right wing. And when I say the pity bang thing, it's 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 like there's two two options here. He's a guy repressing his urges to be with a woman because he knows he's not good enough to find a worthwhile one. That's why he uh, is so angry at other women, or he doesn't want women. But we do know the pity bang thing worked women. because it worked on baked alaska he, he doesn't want women he basically explained just that and the only reason he would get married to a woman uh would be because the a bible baby making machine yeah and because the bible says he should do that otherwise the the thought of decade after decade of being around her <laughs> yeah. makes him sick I just wanted to point out, though, that this is there is precedent here with these uh, right boys. The second that Baked Alaska got some of that sweet Aaron, he he turned blue. He was straight up. He turned blue. He was pro. He was sipping. He was Yang Gang pro Democrat because a, a a liberal girl let let him catch a whiff. Leadership. That, that's how weak constitutionally these fucking twerps are. Prefer to live under a right wing government, you know, so to speak. Although I am more on Eric's side of things these days, where I'm edging, edging closer and closer towards um, anarchism. But, you know, I'm not suggesting that I would rather a left wing government over a right wing one. I'm simply saying, having never lived under the autocratic rule that you seem to be promoting in some capacity, I just, I'm having a hard time understanding how you can say that this would be the best way to go about doing things when you actually have no practical experience. The more. Roman Republic was around, and then it gave birth to a, re a true empire ruled by Caesar, and then, you know, they uh, they reached their zenith under the empire. So I don't necessarily think that's the worst thing in the world. I just find it interesting, though, that you're, that you're you know, promoting these ideas having not ever lived under them. Like, yeah, he's saying, like, democratic Rome became an empire under an emperor, under a Caesar. Um, so that's, he thinks that's the natural progression <laughs> uh, the, I mean, he wants to live under that. He's a grifter. He's all full of it. He knows that the little young nothings haven't seen life, so anything he tells them makes them feel comfortable. This is verbal snake oil, I knowing that they're they're not man enough to be men because the men that they were taught to be just don't have value in this world anymore. It sucks. Like there there is a problem with that, but it's not because women don't want them. It's because women want more, and and men want more, and. Men and women in this generation, like I said, millennials are the most educated and the most underpaid. They have less, and they all want more. That's the problem. I it's time to start putting more a, out there. It's you know, it's odd to say let's paint the entire house blue when you've never seen a blue house. Well, I mean, do I need to go to Russia to? Yes, probably. Why? I mean, why? I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. A very good friend of mine who I've known for about ten years used to be very much like you, actually. Um, and he, you know, he's someone who used to really, really prop up authoritarianism. He used to, and he still believes this in part that people do need to be governed to a large extent because people, you know, left alone are morons and. Uh, that's not something necessarily that I even disagree with. I think your average person is probably as dumb as a bag of rock. But I don't think it's because people are left alone that they're morons. I think they're literally conditioned to be morons because they're more valuable stupid than they are in, uh, with intelligence. It's competition at that point. Yeah. However, he moved to Singapore, which you could argue is not the worst place in the world. Obviously, it's quite clean. People, you know, follow the law. The, the crime rate is reasonably low. That's because the punishments are very harsh. Catch for... a good caning for spitting bubblegum on the sidewalk. Yeah. But after about two years of living in Singapore, where they knock on your door, and, and this has happened to him, where he got dubbed in by his neighbors for having water on his balcony, and they said it's it's causing a, uh, a mosquito problem. Shouldn't so, have so water. Yeah, he had, yeah, so like rainwater puddled on his balcony. Balcony, and the cops are like, you are in trouble for uh, attracting mosquitoes. Yeah, you should. You shouldn't don't attract mosquitoes. It shouldn't be like a like like a legal offense against. Now we're you. at your house. Well, in Singapore, it is. Yeah. So once you know the rules. Um, you he he said to them. me, "I hate living in this country. I hate the authoritarianism here. I hate the way that things operate." Oh. Because coming from Australia, he's he's an Aussie. Porn is illegal there in Singapore. Yeah, and I've known people that got uh, jobs there, um, and they had to 
delete all the porn that they had saved on their computer. Is premeditated or no? Is pre marriage premarital sex? I'm like premeditated sex. No. Oops. Is premarital sex illegal? No. So who needs porn? But you can just go out. And he was like, I much prefer the way that we do things back home, or at least you know the freedom that we have in living in a country where that's staunched in some capacity was really and is and continues to be very bothersome and trying for him. <laughs> And so I just find it interesting, though, that you've only ever lived in the United States. Mm. I just I, I just you can only do so much reading before practical experience actually should take, you know, some Stop! sort of precedent. He's already dead. <laughs> He's already dead. Oh, uh, this this one is hilarious. This is a really short clip that I laughed really hard. at. She's like it's sort really of like right leaning, too. That's the best part. Yeah. Check this out. It's sort of like me, it's like I'm Joker, you know, in like that movie. But again, I guess my thing to you... You mean the Joker? Like I... Yeah, Joker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm Joker, you know, like from that movie. You mean the Joker? You mean the movie <laughs> that was literally him, uh, the incel, Joker. projecting his manifestations of what it would be like to, to be a man onto, onto the, 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 his delusions? You mean the Joker? He was delusional. Here he is uh, talking about the cookie monster joke. Yeah. Like, but he's an anti-Semite. And so first of all, but no, but people say this, right? And it's like, well, why? And it's like, he made this joke about cookies and the Jews. And I go, okay, I don't know about you, but I'm not a bitch enough to actually care about that. Like I literally, the, the humor thing, like it's like people always say, well, I wouldn't say that. I've not, I, I haven't said that. I want to ask what this is, but I, well, I don't, I don't talk, don't know. Not no, no, no. But I, I, YouTube already hates us. Yes, I'm I, saying no, but I'm saying like. Show me afterwards. It's like, like okay, so if you wouldn't. I don't, I don't know what that is. No, but if you wouldn't say it, then just don't say it. But did you really think someone's evil because they made a joke? But th when you, when they meet, when people meet you like she did, she's like, this is actually not who I thought I was about to meet. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a polite, amicable. I'm, I'm a human being. You know, I'm a human being. Being. I'm a free thinker. Um, and, you know, ultimately my job is to provoke. You know, of course, I'm, I'm self-righteous and I'm fighting for a cause. But a lot of it is just mischief. A lot of it's just fun. He's Loki. He's just Loki. <laughs> He's just a god of mischief. Yeah. A lot saw of him when he was on that date with Catboy. He threw a lot of his morals out just to have, share a jacket and a plate of fries with a, yeah. with a sexy cat boy and cat ears. <laughs> Like we, we saw you throw your morals out multiple times and then cow, kowtow back afterwards when your audience is like, what are you doing hanging out with a, a, a guy that slurps deal dose? I thought you were supposed to be uh, against this sort Lally of behavior. Socks. Your, your, your response was, no, trust me, guys. He watched a Hitler documentary. He's based. He's based in Red Pill. He approves of Hitler like us, guys. That was your excuse for gaying around. Like you, you know what your excuse should be? Is that you're fucking lonely and you love cat boys, but you couldn't even own up to that. That's my problem. The Cookie Monster joke. I don't have it's a problem. It's not even a joke. It's 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 anti-Semitism in the eyes of Sesame Street. It's, it's ha ha ha. Denial. Very, very yeah. funny. Very funny. But here's the thing. Just say it. You're hiding behind right. that because you're a pussy. That's why it wasn't a joke. He wasn't he wasn't making like a funny joke. He was avoiding outright denying the Holocaust. By making a dumb analogy of it. Yeah, real real strong. It was coded language to avoid getting banned from YouTube. Real which he strong eventually, man right here. Which, by the way, I don't... I wish he was still on YouTube. Yes. I don't mind him being on YouTube. Yeah. This is hilarious. Uh, I want audience, him on more. His audience wants him to be a martyr so bad. like the, the most blood he's ever spilled was literally from picking boogies out of his own nose. Things that I do and say, I do without thinking sometimes because they're funny, because they're funny, because they're interesting. It's like, you know, what if we just run with this, like the cookie monster thing or whatever? I'm not the kind of guy that says, you know, oh, no, we can't say that on this show. That is reprehensible. What do you mean we? You're the only person on your show. We oh no, I'm not the guy. OK, you are the only guy on your show. I can't wait for Nick's follow-up uh, comedy special about the elf on the shelf. I get, I get what you're saying, like making jokes and being funny or at least trying to get your, you know, trying to antagonize people. That's one thing. And there's plenty of people who do that. Like you're not the first person to try it. Um, and obviously you're quite successful at it. But mm. I would say, I mean, don't you think to some extent that polarizing people doesn't reach... If you want, if you really want to get your your point across, and you really want to change people's minds, and you really want to push this agenda that you have here to push, because obviously you have strong feelings, and obviously you care about the trajectory of America, probably even the planet, and you do care about right wing values, and you do care about conservative values. Did you think that perhaps to some extent 
polarizing people who otherwise might listen to you is maybe not the best course of action because if you it, obviously there are people who are going to love you regardless, right? There are people who automatically dis, uh, automatically agree with those are simp's. Yes, those are the simp's. There is white knights. Do you think you're he fantastic? An and a lot of them in our chat at the moment who really, really think you're wonderful. <laughs> you see that? tons of people in our chat right now. But then there's a bunch of people who might, you know, warm to your ideas if you weren't saying like, yeah, let's let's do this, that, and the other. You know, things that they might find inaccessible. Like, I, I guess I'm I'm just trying to. Yeah, like I always see the Nick Simps come into the chat and they talk about how many more views Nick gets, but it's like Amaranth gets ten times as many views as Nick. Are we supposed to, I mean, like, it's it's the simp factor. I wonder, ah, what would what would Nick look like with gigantic boobs? Not attractive. I understand. Mm. Yeah, I understand where you're coming Maybe from. But, you know, in my opinion, in the truth is polarizing. You know, when Jesus came, he said, I came to divide people. I came to bring a sword. I'm going to separate people in their own houses. He's going to separate people in their own houses. Why, why is that never uh, what I hear preached at church? Is, is that <laughs> like, it's divisive. Is, is, that, is that like the late level church? I, have I been going to church 101? That's church 201? What, what is that? Fourth semester God? Well, well, I, I don't hear that at any of the, the, uh, the four times I've been to church. <laughs> All right, so here, uh, so after this stream, there was some sort of um, streamyard uh, hangout between a bunch of Nick fans, Spexo, and a bunch oh. of other Nick fans, and they always say we cope and see. Was there some copium? There was some copium. There was some cedium. Oh, Coca Cola. Uh, so here's a little bit of that. In the Speaking of women, I didn't Copa notice I was about that. What about that, uh, what about that Sydney chick? Yeah, I was, oh. we were just talking about that. Yo. Yeah, she was. Dude, oh, she was so. Oh pissed. my. Spexo without his beard, 100% looks like uh, one of those life cereal he's, kids. He's trying to be Catboy because Catboy <laughs> was all clean shaven. <laughs> oh my god! If he gets cat ears on his damn headphones because he wants to slide up in Nick's DMs. Oh, he wants to slide up into something. And Nick's BMs? Yeah. <laughs> you screwed yes, the guys, entire time, bro. I grew up with three older know. women. <clears throat> you you will never get used to it. I grew up with three older women. You never get used you to it. You never get used to it, Tebek, though. They don't know what it's like to be a real man. <laughs> <laughs> Mom. Mom! I can't believe he did that. I can't believe my tw girl twin sister was eight minutes older than me. She holds it over my head. She's eight <laughs> inches taller than me, too. She got all the looks, all the height, all the brains. All I got was all the anger. Yes. Yosemite Sam! It would be hilarious if Nick was like the Danny DeVito to her Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. His sister's like... um. I don't know, Nicole Bass. I can't think of a no, no, no. Well, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, I was, I was thinking like an actual like female Schwarzenegger. I meant she got all the good genetics and Nick did. I, I, yeah, like she's like uh, I don't know, super. Um, I, what, what's what's an what's an alpha woman look like? Just blonde, big old. You know what? I don't, I don't know. You're going to uh, uh you've been listening to Nick too much. Is apparently. Brittany Venti Nick Fuentes' real life sister? Do we know? No. Okay. <laughs> I praise the Lord I didn't turn out like Milo, dude, because I grew up with three older women. Mm -hmm. I praise the Lord I didn't turn out like Milo, dude, because I grew up with three older women. Imagine if I went to Catholic <laughs> church and my priest, if I seduced my priest, oh my God, I would be like... I don't know if that's the Milo he's talking about. Maybe. I, who, who else Who else could it be? I don't know. It's got to be Milo Yamalopoulos, right? Papadopoulos? Yeah, yeah Milo Papadopoulos. Milo Snopolophagus. 
this? Because you grew and, up with three older women. <laughs> the hearing her just go on and on and on and have it, seeing Nick just be like, oh my God, can't you just shut the heck Bro, up? She, Dude, no, this is. You can never Nick get was, used to it, man. So you can never when get she used was to rambling, it. when she was rambling, Nick is just. Nick yeah, Nick just, is just his face like, is just uh-huh. like. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. Uh-huh. No. Th- there was a question. Like, yeah. question. Like, Having experience like a woman. Actually, it was the other way around. Nick kept talking, and she kept giving him like the stank eye the whole they time. They were both stink eyeing each other. They didn't see eye to eye on much of anything for one good reason. One of them hosts a, a conservative podcast that brings on guests all the uh, time, and the other one sits in his basement and yells at the camera and complains about just about anything. He complains about the price of coffee or whatever the hell's on his mind because he's really not a conservative. I don't- Later. like those big hamburger places where they give you the big <laughs> fancy hamburgers. Yeah. Give me a tiny kid size meal because I can't handle a big piece of beef. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Bro, that was the best line. Yeah. But yo, the question. The oh, dude. Wait, remember when Nick said that? Yeah, dude. That was so awesome. Yeah, man. It was based in red pelled. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly edged myself. Yeah. yeah. I like totally like knew like if I'd have grown up with three older sisters, I'd have fucking owned them in that moment, dude. The question she was trying to ask was, how can you have these views of a woman when you've never been in a relationship, right? That was the simple question she was trying to ask. She took like a, a minute and 45 seconds to, to answer, ask that question. She said all these unnecessary words and just kept talking in circles. And you could just see Nick like just losing energy with this nagging woman. And it's funny because <laughs> because she's getting pissed off at all the stuff that he's... Cr- I could tell. I stared into Nick's eyes the entire time he was on there. <laughs> and I, I like how he's calling her a nagging woman when Nick was calling all women nagging women. This is their buzzword. He, the- he has no opinions of his own. He has to get his opinions from somebody else. He changed his whole fucking religion because he simps for Nick Fuentes. That's cute. Correctly saying Adorable. about women, and she is living Spectre up to like every single three. stereotype of woman. Nixon. She's just being completely naggy, over emotional, and, and, and irrational. Over you know? emotional and, just, and thought, irrational. Funny though. I don't think it's over emotional and irrational to ask somebody if they have any experience, one on one personal experience with women, if they're so judgmental of women. And experience if you think authoritarian governments are good, yeah. if you've ever even visited one, let alone yeah. lived in one. This is her nagging. It was to question any of his life right. experiences, which which here's the key. Th- he has none. His the, the most life experiences that we've heard of outside of him rambling about burgers being too big to eat. Like, uh, Can you imagine a man saying he doesn't like big burgers because he can't handle eating a oh, fucking burger? Oh, they put all this extra stuff you, on there. You, I can't eat the burger. This is the, who they simp for. They simp for a man that can't even handle a, a, a burger. He can't even eat a sandwich. And they think he's oppressed? He's, he's weak. He's weak. And she's pointing out his lack of life experiences. The the one story we got outside of him was that he brought a bag of weed back to his old hometown trying to get people to come hang old friends to hang out with him with free weed. He tried to honeypot them with weed and they're like, "Nah, dude." Now, what if that that's was That's not true. That's not true. We don't know if that was true or not, right? But that's It's a great story. That's all we really have to go off of other than him saying he can't handle eating a sandwich. And, and, and her argument is at fault, too, because, like, many people do that. If you watch how many people can know and understand football but never really played it so well. Right. You know, yeah. another thing. It's, really, it's really dumb. Remember how people can understand football? Remember? Like, she's so dumb because, like, we know how to – we don't how to understand football even though we don't play two-hand touch. Marjorie. Right. If you're experienced, love how- you don't need real life experiences to have an opinion on every single thing. Right. Like you should have some experiences before you go out and tell the entire world they should live like Saudi Arabia. <laughs> You'd think a little bit of life experience would, would, would be necessitated before you decide to send us into fucking um, Sharia law? Yeah, it's funny because the conservatives used to always be like, the left wants to institute Sharia law. They want to let Muslims institute Sharia law in American cities. That used to be a big uh, conservative talking point, like... And as recent as like 10 years ago. Yeah, but they would love it if there was gospel law. In France, (laughs) where they're easy on Muslims, they already have Sharia law in parts of Paris. You you would hear that kind of stuff. America breaks into gospel law now that churches are made to pay their fair share of taxes. (laughs) (laughs) 
there's mm-hmm. certain there's certain circumstances where that might be true but if you're living in america right now and you see this neoliberal hellhole that we're currently living in and you see all the decadence and degeneracy and then you read about times in the past where this wasn't the case where there was families and the birth rates were up and people were christian and all this families? stuff you can you form say? that opinion based on just reading about that that okay that was obviously a better way of life back then right you don't have to go oh well how do you know you would actually enjoy that better um because i fucking hate this society it makes no sense <laughs> yeah. It's funny it's so too because funny. I feel like big, big, if anybody needs me, I'll be in my room until society changes. We can have prosperity and tolerance, okay? We don't have to take away rights from people. We just have to actually allow prosperity to breed again. We don't have prosperity in this country for the majority. It's a minority driven system right now. The, the, the minorities are the, the ones with all the wealth. And the minorities are the 1%, the, the ultra-rich. They're getting richer and richer and richer, and there's less to go around. That's just the math. And you want to blame it on the liberals allowing women to vote or, or, or allowing women to, I don't know, have it's dumb it, opinions like y'all men do? There's hardly any conservative that, that want women to not vote. Like, the... Nick Fuentes is an outlier on this opinion. Like, this is not a, a common opinion to, in today's day and age. That was like, it's it's ridiculous. Because I feel like Sydney thinks that all the Groypers are just all 15-year-old, like, people. He said a lot of them were teenagers. He told her that. In high school, I'm like, no, there's a there, there's a lot of goipers that are in their 30s, by the way, that have families. So yeah, I think the, uh, do, do their family like they live at home with their mom. Yeah, there are a lot of like Spexo has a wife and kids. He does. So like, there are goipers that are in their 30s that are grown with wives and children, and you know what? They're fighting a weird little kids battle too. Yeah, it's an interesting hobby. It's an interesting thing you do for entertainment in your we spare time. We woke up to Nick Fuentes as the supreme leader because I had three older sisters, and I'm not. I'm lucky. I'm not my well yeah, monopolis. <laughs> uh, more, the more active ones, like obviously the ones that go to events and stuff like that, are on on the young side or whatever. But a lot of people in my chat and people that I talk to are like in their late twenties, early thirties, and stuff like that. And we have wives and jobs and careers and stuff like that. And like it's just yeah. it's just like a um, a stupid stereotype. It's just like these whores who they these wanted to say, whores. oh, you're you're an incel. You you don't you can't get laid or whatever. And it's well, like Nick, Nick did admit to being an incel. You know what they're gonna say? And I've seen this in the chat a few times after you've said incel. Mm-hmm. Is they say, oh, he's a vol cell. He's voluntarily <laughs> celibate. Okay, my bad. Uh, he's vol cell. I forgot that he did say that he didn't want to live with a woman for thirty years. But is it is he pulling the like? Well, I didn't. I don't really want it anyway. Like, I promise like, you, the type of woman that if if he if he's into women, the type of woman he's looking for does not want him. He's gonna have to get a whole lot more charming. Because there's a whole lot more guys with money and uh, fame out there, more famous and more well-to-do than tiny little uh, dress for his christening. Or what was what, it called? Mass? He's dressed like a Catholic fucking uh, Easter. He, oh, he, you mean, uh, his, well, there's baptism and there's first communion? Yeah, he looks like he's going to his first communion in yeah. that tiny little dork suit. It is weird. Uh, first communions are weird because the little boys wear little suits and the little girls basically dress in like, it's almost like bridal gowns. The, the it's type, one of the weirdest things The uh, type ever. of woman that these guys want exists. 100%. They're out there looking for guys that are nothing like you. Spexo's wife and kids he brought his wife in from uh, Brazil. You know, he couldn't even find an American woman to live his lifestyle. He brought her in from Brazil. And you know what? If he's happy, he's happy. Good for him. But he's not finding them in America because American women want better than him. Well, we're Christian, so we don't want to have premarital sex. And second of all, a bunch of us are married with kids. And you think that you're, you want to talk about empowerment and stuff like that, but you're basically saying your only value is in sex, right? So it's just, it's just uh, really stupid and insincere, this whole incel thing, which most people aren't even yeah. incels. They're, they're, bol- they're bol- <clears throat> Who's saying their only value is in sex? Uh, I guess people who enjoy sex is what he's saying. Because Nick because was saying he yeah. didn't want a woman other than to breed with. 
So he was saying her only value was to give him a male heir. Well, and to be like the trad wife to like cook and clean. Yeah, and but like... he couldn't see living with her for 40 years. No, so that's he would why get annoyed. That's why he's got to have a little apartment above a gay bar where he can go live and be free once or twice a week. Cells, they've just appropriated the term incel, I think, but um, they're, yeah. they're basically vol cells. Mm -hmm. If you're voluntarily celibate and you're uh, you're actively not trying to have premarital sex and you're not focused on women because you want to... When I hear vol cell, I picture like an incel version of Voltron. <laughs> Focus on yourself right now and better he's your life. That's awesome. That's not himself something to be right like, looked now. down upon. Not something. Absolutely agree. And the reason, and also, I'm not surprised that Sydney was acting like that because number one, she's not religious. I'm pretty sure she's an atheist. Yeah, she even said it herself. Yeah, she's Please agnostic show. now because she can take the online bullying. Agnostic. So and she, then she's so going. She changed her uh, title to agnostic now. Wait, man. And, and, and then, so if, who is she? Yeah, she's she, she like, she like so is the type of guy to look up to Nick. These really do sound like the type of guys to look up to Spexo yeah. and sit on a call with him. This is his second tier fan base that he got from Spexo. Remember that? Or uh, from Fuentes. Remember that uh, Discord server that we were in? Uh, the Jared Genesis Discord yeah, server? Yeah, Amos Yee was in there. Yeah, all who these, just, all just these got weird people were in there. And these guys don't sound too far off of their vocal inflections. Yeah. The way they talk is very, like, different. Yeah. And I'm not judging them. Uh, wait, yeah, I am. So he got <laughs> he got that little bit of Fuentes clout, and he attracted a little, you know, island of misfit toys. Yeah, these are his little misfit boy toys. I would have been just like my well, I have three older sisters. <laughs> Married to to Elijah or something? Are they just friends or what? No, I think I think she's, no, they're friends. I think she's uh, single. Yeah. It's funny because yeah, when I was when I was the Norman con, I used to like her too. She was like, you know, the the uh, dub, dub. those uh, <laughs> women con uh, commentators who talked about men's rights and stuff. So I, she was cool back in the day to me. But now, since I'm not Normie con anymore, yeah, she's cringe. Well, it was hilarious. When... Can we go back ten seconds and just listen closely to what this guy said? Oh. Commentators who talked about men's rights and stuff. So I, she was cool back in the day to me, but now since I'm not normie con anymore, yeah, she's cringe. Well, it was hilarious. <laughs> she, she used to touch on men's rights back in the days, but you know now that I'm not <laughs> normie con anymore. Now that I'm not normie con anymore, yeah, she's cringe. Dude, can you hear yourself? Can you she's hear? cringe. She's cringe. Cause, she's cringe because he's not normie con anymore. Wow! Wow! Yes, when when she was like, she was like, so what was the type of country that or that or the type of system that you would like for women? And he was like, um, something more closer to the Taliban. That was mad funny. <laughs> Dude, oh my gosh! Her examples when she did talk about her friend who went to Singapore, which is like a capitalist country. It still has authoritarian laws. It has very strict punishments for things that we don't even have punishments for that are not illegal here. Uh, it's like it gives people the death penalty. Well, these guys would probably agree with this, but it gives people the death penalty for drugs. It's uh, a pretty messed up place. If you don't have any business in Singapore, then you don't have any business in Singapore. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. Talk about like, like, like that. Your friend's struggle at Singapore is nothing to what Nick has gone through. What are you talking about? What has? Oh shit! Did I just do something? I think I. Yeah, I think yeah. I just did something. What the hell has <laughs> Nick gone through? What has Nick Fuentes gone through? I got banned from American Airlines for not putting a mask on. And claiming that it was because he was at the January 6th. Let's take a look at some of the uh, comments we got on our video last month. Okay, so Troll uh, oh, This is metal. a positive one. I started with this one. It says, I might be a fascist, but this show is good, even if I disagree with 90% of the crap you guys say. So what? there's, there's one... I, I don't know if he's a Fuentes fan <laughs> or if he just agrees with some of the stuff Fuentes says, but... There was one. There was a positive comment. Here. See, I thought I thought he was larping as uh, what's what, what's that guy's name? Trumpster Bob, because Trumpster Bob basically <laughs> was yeah. was doing this. But I, I I said I might I may not agree with you, but that doesn't mean I can't enjoy you. <laughs> and then Skinny Norris said, "Democracy in action, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Democracy in action." Here's uh, 
this this guy says we make him feel normal. Yeah, he tit one says. So who wants to be normal? Thank you guys for making me feel normal. See, people who find value in being normal are the most boring types of people. You're welcome, tit one. They want to blend in and just be one of the many. No, I want to be normie con. Normie? I want to be normie con. Nick Fuentes is extremely well spoken. This is this is one of those white supremacists that definitely thinks Nick Fuentes is is Mexican. That's like yeah yeah that's like what white like what racist said about Obama yeah. when Obama was first started running for president. He's one of the good ones. What? <laughs> oh, this this guy uh, says why uh, not just talk to Nick instead of doing this commentary? I I, I want to before we move on. I have I've reached out to Nick. He was aware of it because he talked about it on some of his streams. And then I made a cat boy joke and he blocked me before he got banned from Twitter. But for years before he got banned from Twitter. And then I, I had seen him talk about it. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll go out there and talk to Vosh. So we, we had this thing. We were going to have Nick and Vosh on. We ended up doing Vosh and Ethan Ralph instead. Yeah, um, <laughs> that turned out really well, yeah, and, and happily ever after. Yeah, three guys are having a five-hour debate with a recording of someone. I we didn't go five hours uh, with Nick. No, that would have drove me crazy. Yeah, he'd probably gladly do a live discussion. This comes off like no. A- <laughs> He won't. He, he, Why do you guys assume so much? Like, like, and the name is like, what? Good point. In so with rage, hundred percent. If you guys want to go and spam his chat, saying "Go on, drunken peasants," these fat incels are fat. Uh, what would we be? We're not incels. What are we? We're we're fat degenerates. Yeah, yeah these these fat degenerates uh, keep talking trash about you. Send him our way, please. Tell him we're waiting. We've been waiting. For a girl like you. He'd probably gladly do a live discussion. This comes off like cowardly hit piece. To be frank, I only skimmed a little bit of it because it really boils down to three boring slobs constantly interrupting a video of someone that is actually a great orator. Who's a funny great orator. With interesting perspectives. Yeah, people say said that. <laughs> people like you said that about Hitler. Honestly. <laughs> He's a great orator. And I said, I said. Good point, incel with rage. Yeah. What a great name. <laughs> At least they're honest about that. I, I don't know who you were talking to here, but... This know, is this is incel with rage. Why uh, did he... Ch- re- it came up as uh, whatever that yeah. is. Yeah. But uh, incel with rage said something like, uh, some guy with random uh, name on Twitter or on YouTube making fun of other guy with random name's name. And I'm like, uh, your points were actually good up until now. My name is Brand. I'm starting to second guess you, incel with rage. <laughs> <Just bring it. laughs> and yeah. then uh, Lord Magic says, I'm pretty sure Ben has, in fact, invited Nick to come on like before. Said, he refused yeah. like a coward. And then incel with rage, again, one of the best names uh, I think I've seen in the responses so far. So I'm really doubtful Nick is scared of a battle of wits with any of these slobs. And by the way, uh, after this video goes live, anyone here, feel free to engage in the comments, uh, including the, the Nick Fuentes fans that yeah, happen to stop just by. Just you guys make sure to eat the boogers off your fingertips before <laughs> you start typing. <laughs> uh, and I said, yeah, your hero Nick is a coward. Yeah, I heard this before. I don't know who you bozos are, but last time I heard Nick was scared to debate was because the guy Vouch would only do it on his own stream with no mod. That's not so true. So Nick didn't oblige. What was your underhanded angle? We literally were going to have him on with Vosh, but he backed out like a pussy boy. Yeah, so he wasn't only going to do it on his own stream. He would have been... Uh yeah, common ground. Where we're one, where one, we are not cool with Vosh. We think he's an absolute communist. Uh-huh. Psych. We like Vosh. <laughs> of course, yeah, it would have been. But even so, we normally keep our mouth shut during debates here. Yeah. Um, and and but but there's the thing. Nick had said he would do it maybe on Drunken Peasants yep. on one of his streams. Yep. We so he that. he set the ground. He set the the ground and still backed out. Yes. That's the problem. Of course, we would have been, you know, more cordial with Vosh. We've had him on a ton of times, but we would have been fair because guess what? We don't need to help Vosh in a battle against the men like Nick Fuentes. 
The Locust God said, pretty sure that DP was going to host that debate you're talking about, LMAO. Yeah. And Michael R., the R short for regarded. So that sounds totally fair and impartial. Vosh, on the other hand, had the opportunity to go on the kill stream to do it and turned it down. Okay, so first of all, Vosh debated uh, Ralph on our stream, which I think was also being streamed on yeah. Ralph's channel and, and was streamed on Vosh's channel. So that happened, and Vosh had been on the kill stream in the past before. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't even understand what this point is. Um, Vosh just wouldn't put up with Ethan Ralph because Ethan Ralph got fucking blacked out on something. I don't know what it was, and then started threatening to dox people, and that's yeah. what happened. Fang says, "Why do you simp for that loser, and why do you like the Taliban?" <laughs> Perfectly reasonable questions. Yeah. I see you. You see me. Oh, here, here's another thing. Nick Fuentes fans. You know what? They stopped doing the living went rent free. That was something they were doing for a long yeah. time. And they stopped doing the, oh, I like this Nick guy. Who is he? But now they're doing this. I don't even like Nick, but you guys are worse. I don't it's watch. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't watch any of Nick and these guys. I wanted to see what the fuss is about, Nick Fuentes. But that greasy guy in the middle was like, the family <laughs> is no the closest to you. Is this the American standard? Gives incel vibes. You're giving incel vibes. Yeah, because I said the, your family is not the closest to you. And then I, in the same stream, I said, you're supposed to break away from your family and start a family of your own, and you choose the family you're close to. Sometimes you stay close to that family that raised you because guess what? You had a great bond. I have a great bond with my family. I see them uh, very often. I do hugs and kisses, and we put up family, a damn Christmas family, tree. Family, family. We, family, we're, we're family, very, we're family, very close. Family, 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 family. I'm very lucky and privileged to have a family as great as I do, but I, I'm not stupid enough to think that everybody has that. You have to recognize that you do have some some blessings in this world that, that aren't God given, but you were just born into the right group of people that raised you correctly. And sometimes people don't have that. And we're supposed to act like everybody has family to fall back on. That's that's not true. It's not true at all. <sighs> Rat Lord Algarez says, no, bully Nick. And I said, uh, you literally chastise me for supposed personal experiences and then break into a song and dance about your personal socialist crybaby experience. Yeah, because this person was like, oh, I lived in a socialist country. Yeah. <laughs> you want him to be a martyr so bad, but he's a fucking stay-at-home loser with zero life experience, giving edgy takes to dweebs more distant than himself. My family is tight-knit and very strong, but I realize I'm lucky to have that. Not everyone does. You're big dumb, little man. Uh, I love this. I love your response to this one. <laughs> Elmos, Elmos says, how does it feel to be completely irrelevant old men, part of a dead movement, seething at rising political actor, only growing in influence? And I said, to be honest, it feels pretty good. <laughs> I'd rather be a dead meme getting paid to entertain a small group of people than a fear-mongered follower taking direction from an undesirable leader. And Elmo said, Cope. See? Cope. Cope. What a great comeback. Man, Cope. they really showed you. Cope. 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 I mean, who are you to talk to, to me like that? They all say the same like, shit. Like, 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 you are... A tier one nutsucker for a manlet driven by anger, acting like you're LARPing, that you have some real political sway. The the people in your party look at you as the goofy fucking dorks they don't even want to take seriously. Did you not see Sidney Watson tearing apart your leader for being a goofy dork? 
And you think that you have some sort of power? You have Cope. you have teen angst. Cope. Directed towards anger that's literally making the world think your leader wants to reenact a gospel law where Sharia law could be in America. That's weird. That's weird. This this you guy. want dogmatic law. You're weirdos. <laughs> Nick is talking about faith in God, and all you can do is lie about him, LMAO. I wish I could be harsher with you, but YouTube AI blocks it. You're lucky Satan is blocking my truth bombs. Is this Mr. LDS? Mr. LDS. Oh, I didn't know it was Mr. LDS. Mr. Latter-day Saints. Oh, wow. I didn't know we were going to have Mr. LDS yelling at us in all caps. Rat Lord Alcarez is getting stopped by YouTube algorithm? Yes, because YouTube and their algorithm is satanic just like you. Damn. Damn. You know Satan types in all caps, right? Yes. I don't think this is That's Mr. a well-known fact. It's in the Bible. I think this is the LDS doesn't stand for Latter-day Saints. It stands for Lucifer Dick Sucker. <laughs> I was going to say Little Dick Syndrome. Oh. Oh, yeah, th- this. This is priceless. This is what comes up when you type Nick Fuentes in the Twitter shirts. Nick, search Nick Fuentes, Nick Fuentes gay, Nick Fuentes women. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so I got to make a quick bathroom run. We'll come back in a minute here if you want to read the Streamlabs and do whatever. Uh, I will return. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. So, uh, Paolo Rossi says, let's go. He managed to make his own allies. He managed to make his own allies cringe. 11 out of 10. For real, though, these are his allies. And these followers really think that it's a movement that anybody takes seriously. You're like a fraternity of guys who can't afford to go to college. Or you probably go to college, but you could never actually pledge a fraternity. This is your fraternity, you know. It's a bunch of ne'er-do-wells getting together and doing doing a, a LARPing as little uh, neo, Nazi, uh, what do we call it, Nazi youth? Not Nazi youth LARPers? Embarrassing. Eduardo Garcia said, Mom, 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 Mom. Sea Dog says, uh, Nick now has a mommy humiliation fetish after this interview. Something, something's got to give. This boy's going to have to get some sort of fetish. Because right now, I, I think it's, his fetish has been cat boys. Like, that's, that's all we know. Eduardo Garcia gave that big love again. Thank you, Eduardo. Seth Buzz says only people over five foot eight should be able to vote. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know if that's true. I think people over five foot eight already have natural advantages. They don't need to be the only ones voting. Seth Buzz gave some more big love. Thank you, Seth Buzz. Uh, Alex Leon gave some big, big love. Uh, uh, I'm glad that you uh, got to sit on your ass for 10 hours due to the outage, and I hope that uh, you will be able to get back into the swing of things when you're back to work, and it's not a burden on catching up. That's got to suck the day after. Lowbrow Jester, here's something to start the week off right. Love you guys. Family, 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 family. Thank you. For those of you that uh, chose to be $50 level patrons this month to get that Manatee T-shirt, I uh, thank you all very much. And let's look back at the chat. Yeah, a small phallic object is my favorite Nick story is still the pot friend story. It just, it's, it's, it shows the type of guy he is. He's lonely. And he's so lonely that he found a corner of the internet that nobody wanted to be in. And he stood in that corner. And he got a bunch of followers that he doesn't even want to be around. Yeah, he tried to jump on the neocon movement at first. There's those old videos of him and his like high school buddies um, yeah. talking some neocon. They even talk shit about Trump and how he's like divisive and anti-Semitic or something. Yeah. And, and, and then he saw he's an opportunist. He saw how it was shifting and decided to go that route. And now he has to continue to push the envelope further and further. 
because there's no other direction to go. And it's okay, you know, that his followers are all just as lonely as he is. Like, you guys, one day you'll realize that it's better to laugh than to, to hurt. And we you'll are. Come, you'll come watch us, and you'll laugh all the time yeah. and have fun. Please like the stream, everybody. If you haven't already, throw us a like. Be nice to us. Oh, and also, uh, we're, we're advertising our Patreon. we got a lot of cool stuff planned for Patreon for this coming month, including if you sign up for a $50 pledge or more, you can get this cool uh, Manatezus shirt. I'm sure the Nick Fuentes fans will appreciate this more than anything else. The Manatezus shirt. He died and then resurrected three days later. Yeah. Check it out. Just sign up for Patreon, 50 bucks sometime this month, anytime between now and the end of the month, and we will ship it to you in January. You you want this, by the way. And if you, sti- if you stick around, we're probably going to do a few more shirts to try and see how successful this is. Limited edition shirts that you can't find anywhere else. So. Nowhere, man. Yeah. Keep that in mind. And then later tonight after the show, if you're a $25 patron or more, we're going to meet up in our Discord in the Hangouts voice chat room, and we're going to discuss the private shows coming up. Yeah, for those of you that got the Manatee shirts that haven't been in that level before, you get to come hang out too. So, Yeah. Yeah, all the new uh, $50 patrons that came up from the lower levels. There's been quite a few of you. To secure your shirt, you can join us tonight. Turns water into chili situation. What else we got? We got some good good. Here's uh, T-Bob on old TV shows in AOC. Oh. The Rat Patrol? Let me draw me this show. I'll tell you what I... I always thought it was funny about this show. It was so stupid. It's a great show. I love what watching is this? it. The but Rat Patrol. Like when they turn the Jeep real sharp. Look, you could tell Trumpster Bob is super fucking old because he's got like thirty tabs open. <laughs> and like I do it when I do the show so that I can I have it all ready to click on. But this is just his computer desktop. He has a Bing tab open. My guy's still using Bing. Uh, is he is using uh, Microsoft Edge or whatever it's I called? I think he might have three tabs with Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. I'm not sure. Yeah, There's something Alexandra. What's the Linda? Alexandra Ocasio Cortez porno. Stratego Gab. Are there like deep fake pornos of people? Look, uh, probably. Look at his. Folders. I'm wondering if uh, he's Trump's got Bob looked that up. He's got a Bob folder. Football. Trump news sources. Enemy. <laughs> He's got a folder for enemy. I got to see Bob's enemy folder. Bob, if you're watching this, take us Where through your it? enemy folder. Oh, I just noticed that. Take us through your enemy folder, enemy. Bob. Enemy. I got to oh, I got to know. See it. I got to know. I love this. You know what? I love this cuz now I'm looking at this. There's a Bob folder, there's a football folder. Yeah. There's Trump. Yeah. News sources, enemy. Yeah. Tools, working information sources, funny stuff, voting, political, future videos. Oh, he's got to put put uh, put exposing the enemy folder in the future videos it. folder, I see Bob. It, Bob. Oh my God, this is great. You'll hear a uh, uh, tire squeals like like if they were it's a car turning sharp in the street, but they're on fucking sand. So how? They, why would the tire squeals like that? They wouldn't. The sound effects was terrible, uh, and and then whenever they do like a, a Bloody Mary thing, you know, like a gasoline in a in a damn bottle, for example. What? They'll I think he meant like just, a, a cocktail, like a what do you call it, an, an Irish or a Molotov cocktail. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so he's calling it a Bloody Mary. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> you get the biggest explosions out of that, right? And it was just a little fire bottle. I mean, that's it. A Bloody Mary. Other than that, it's a pretty good show. Molotov cocktails, they, they do some damage. Yeah. Like I've that. never heard them called the Bloody Mary before. Bleed out with Bloody Mary. I prefer a Caesar, okay? Hot. Yeah, it looks like you haven't said. You know the difference between a Caesar and a Bloody Mary? 
Uh, one's got what? Oh, tequila? Yeah, I don't know. No. <laughs> What's that? A Caesar has clamato in it. Oh, really? Yeah. The Muslim having a baby. The border. Mostly right. the same ingredients. That's that bitch that's in all the California rallies, folks. Democracy now. So this and, is uh, this is Linda Sarsour. This bitch right here is in charge of CARE, the Muslim Brotherhood nonprofit. So I think, in I think all the pubs States, tabs C-A-R. are actually him doing the content for his show. <laughs> is it? Yeah. He has gab open and shit. Yeah, I, I don't know. He might get there, but he's he's starting to go through the tabs one by this one. This bitch here working for the Muslim Brotherhood. She supports Alexandria Cortez 100% because Alexandria Cortez is a fucking Muslim. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Alexandria and, Ocasio-Cortez talks to Glenn Greenwald. Interesting. And there's Alexandria. Bitch ass right there. Fucking weirdo communist ass bitch. <laughs> She's not communist. There she is again. Look at that evil face she got. What? God, that bitch is ugly. And, uh... I don't know. A working class hero is something to be. Gotta give him a thumbs down on that bullshit. <laughs> the View. Of course, anything The View supports is anti-American. They're that stupid bitch again. God damn, these are high quality political commentaries from Trumpster Bob. Yeah, he's good like that. <laughs> hey, now look at this stupid oh, that mother. T- uh, I, I I picked out all these tabs, and I'm gonna click on each one and just say what a stupid bitch she is. God. It's sort of like me. It's like I'm Joker, you know, in like that movie. But again, I guess my thing to you. You mean sort the of Joker? Like I- yeah, <laughs> Joker. That's so good. <sighs> you mean the Joker? You mean the Joker? You mean the Bible? Oh. We got a, a few other things here. I'm the Joker, baby. I'm the Joker. The Joker. Oh, you know what? I have a segment that I haven't done in a very long time that we're going to oh. do right now. Here we go. All right. We are going to uh, do this. I, For the first time, this is the first time we've done this uh, since YouTube had the... Um, the polls, the oh, chat wow. polls. So the chat gets to vote. Yes. On troll or not a troll. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. We're losing our power as hosts. That's fine, though. Here we go. Here it comes. Okay, my name is Garrett Edwin Scott. Welcome to episode 24 of Garrett Scott Radio Program. And so we are broadcasting live from liberal Seattle. Staunch conservatives all the way, baby. Us staunch conservative Seattleites are broadcasting live. We're going to take our state back. Us conservative Seattleites, we have just the same tenacity as the liberal Seattleites, but we're on the conservative side. And so this is the Garrett Scott Radio program. Shout out to all the conservative Seattleites out there. His name is Garrett Scott, but the way he pronounces it, I only hear Gert. Like his name is Gert. Like it's short for yogurt. Yeah. Like I'm going to call him Gert. All right, Gert. I'm Gert. I'm going to call him Gogurt. 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 Come on, Gogurt. Red wave in liberal Seattle, baby. We're going to turn this entire state into a conservative hotspot. We are putting Donald Trump stickers on our on our bumper cars and we are going Uh all we're going MAGA all the way. So we are just as okay. So that that to me, the bumper car thing, that's I'm leaning towards troll now. 
Is it was he suggesting that he's going to drive his car into the people's cars? Like- Tenacious as the liberal Seattleites, but we are conservative by nature. So there's more conservatives in Washington state than there are liberals. And we're going to take our state I back and we're going to take our country back. Yeah, there's, there's, there's not more conservatives than there are liberals. The liberals do like majority live in King County, though. Yeah, yeah. Where the King- most population is. Yeah, like King and Pierce County are pretty blue, right? Yeah. And that's where most of the population in the state yeah. would be. And there is definitely, you know, more counties that are red. But more those counties. counties don't have as many people in them by by a large margin. We're going to depose Biden and we're going to get all the conservatives that we can in the Senate and House of Representatives. And what better way to bring a red wave across the United States than conservative Seattleites. So this is a shout out to all you Trump supporters. This is a shout out to all you MAGA lovers out there. We're taking our country back, baby. So uh, I'd like to start off by saying that I am completely opposed to abortion. There, I said it. I said it. It is vibrating throughout molecular existence. I am opposed to abortion. I think it's murder. I think it's wrong. I think it is inappropriate. I think it should be ended. I'm not saying. You know what? You know what I think uh, is inappropriate, Ben? What? Murder. There you said it. I think murder is inappropriate. I I, I, I put it out in a motion. I put it out into the world. I think murder is inappropriate. it It is molecular vapor. Flying through the astral plane at this point. I just put it on a bumper sticker onto my bumper car. On your bumper car. And it says murder is inappropriate. And that God is bringing judgment on us because of because of abortion rights. But I am saying that just by fair practice, abortion should be gotten rid of entirely. If you look at the video footage of what they do, what in order the steps process necessary to abort a baby, it is heinous, it is inappropriate, it is wrongful, and we need to put an end to this practice. If you watch as that needle goes up to the baby, and I'm not going to go any further than that. Yeah, but you should have <laughs> to watch. watch what they, you should have to watch a video to. of a like the opposite of of just like people who pull out and blast big loads on the other person's face or or even even if you want to get that much further away from from uh abstinence or not abstinence of sex but from the pull out method just pull women out of it altogether if we have to watch babies get aborted you have to watch two men who can't get each other pregnant do sex and blow loads on each other's face deal <laughs> deal <laughs> deal <laughs> deal dough I'll watch. It's a deal, though. I'll watch your abortion video if you watch two dudes get plaster blasted in each other's faces. And someone's deal? life inside the womb. This practice should have been gotten rid of years ago. Now, let's talk about women's rights. Let's put this subject on the front headlines. Let's talk about women's rights. Women have the right to vote. Yes. Women have the right to own property. Yes. He's already more progressive than Nick Fuentes. Almost. Well, he's acknowledging that they have the right. Women have the right to work at a job. Yes. Women have the right to drive a car. That's more than Saudi Arabia. Women have the right to speak in public. That's more than Saudi Arabia again. Women have the right to earn income. That's a lot more than many Muslim countries. There's many Muslim countries that oppress women. Women have the right to do many things. They have the right to run for office. Although there's never been a woman president, they have the right to become the president of the United States. Women have rights. You have rights all the way. You are equal in society. Susan B. Anthony and the people of the 19th. What do you think? I haven't voted yet. I think he's too boring to be a troll. Everyone should vote. I'm going to vote not a troll. I think he's too boring to be a troll. Huh, it seems like I am not on the winning side. 20s. Here. We'll see. Drilled it into us with women's suffrage that women have the right to vote in elections. Here it goes. It's they have flipping. the right to own property. They have the right to speak. They have the right to participate in society. Absolutely. Absolutely. But there's one right 
that they do not have. What's that? And they do not have this right. And that is they do not have the right to end somebody's life. And don't I don't think right- babies have the right to leech life off of a living being. Once that baby can exist on its own outside of the body, it's got rights. Once it relies on the mom to be uh, alive, we got a problem. We got a problem here. And somebody's life outside the womb. That's murder. So now why do we flip the coin and say we suddenly have the right to murder somebody inside the womb? Oh, now it's 50-50. When you have a person inside you, I'm putting it all out there. Let the chips fall where they may. Abortion is wrong. Abortion is murder. Abortion should be illegal. Abortion is is illegal you just, is it? it's not is it illegal no it's the closest place in the u.s where it's illegal is texas but it's only like it's like a weird convoluted <laughs> law it's not a criminal offense it's it's great because like it, it's like a weird snitch law yeah and it's a civil <laughs> law it's not a criminal law yeah that's so fucking dumb everybody get your votes in i'm gonna close the voting it looks like not a troll has like snuck up and uh I think Billy's influence has has tipped the scales here. Wow. I think that a lot of the people were just waiting to vote uh, to make their their vote matter. They were waiting to the last minute. Is this guy being genuine that he that he really thinks this shit or is he saying this shit to get attention on the Internet and for laughs? I feel like he really people thinks will be this like, Why? I can't believe you believe this. It's stuff. so boring. Like a, a real troll would have had a modicum of charisma to it. Not always. There's untalented trolls. Yeah, I don't know. He doesn't seem like he's trying to put on a front here. But I could it could be wrong. The bumper cars thing for me. But he said like, bumper stickers on the bumper cars, so it might have been a slip of the tongue because he was using bumper stickers and calling it a bumper car like a buffoon. Because um, I he is a buffoon. He keeps saying the same things over and over again, which makes me think that it's not a troll because he's not elaborating. He's just trying to fill in the space and get his point across. All right, we are closing the voting in just a few seconds here. Five, four, Four, three, three, two, two, one. one. The voting is now closed. Closed. Not a troll. The not a trolls have it. Not a troll. Not a troll. Not a troll. The not a trolls have won. Not a troll. I appreciate those of you that voted whether you voted with me or against me doesn't matter we all went through the democratic process of realizing this guy was a fucking snore fest with dumb ideas we either didn't take him seriously because we thought he wasn't taking himself seriously or we didn't take him seriously because he was dumb we both win hi billy it's the same one. Billy is amazing. 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 You know what I would have done if I would have made this video? Billy is I would have just recorded my own voice like nine times saying it so it would sound like a group of people saying it. That's a good idea too. Yeah. Not a bad idea. If I recorded this, you know what I would do? I would I would uh, digitally alter every face to look like Stitch from Lilo and Stitch, and I would have the voices over and over say, Ohana, Ohana, Ohana. That means family. Ohana means yeah. family. Um, <laughs> yet, uh, there's a knockoff Vago version of Hawaiian Punch. It's called Ohana Punch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fam- the Juggalo family punch. Yeah, Ohana Punch. Juggalos are family. Oh, my God. If all these Vin Diesels had Juggalo face paint on and they were just saying Juggalo and a f- with a, uh, a family with a Juggalo accent. Yeah. Family. Woop, woop, family. He called me, sir. It got me so humiliated. It's dumbass. People are discriminating against wolves. Wow. They're laughing at us, at our stupidity. 
I drank so much of that Ohana punch that uh, I thought I was bleeding out of the ass, but it was just it turned my poop red. I just I just got I just got uh, an image. Um, I don't know. I don't want to share it uh, with with everybody. I don't think I don't know if it's appropriate or not, but it's a. Uh, it's a it's like a, a reply on Twitter and it's a picture of Nick Fuentes with his twin sister. Uh-huh. And it says, uh, well one one picture is Nick with his twin sister. The other is uh his twin sister with her arms wrapped around a uh a, a black woman. And it, the the quote says, Reminder, Nick's sister is getting fingered by a black lesbian in the next room over while Nick records America first. No, LOL. <laughs> no, is that true? I, I'm just gonna send this picture to you, so you can. You can I'm not gonna share it. Obviously I'm just gonna look not. At this it. is private. This is private. It was. I, somebody sent it to me from a website called. Uh, oh shit! Uh, Why oh, Kiwi Pedia Wiki Farms? Oh, uh, Kiwi Pedia. I don't, I don't know how it was pronounced. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just let you look at it, and and you tell me if you can see it. Any sort of uh, validity in this this image, because this is uh, this could this could be a deep fake. This could be a deep fake. I just it, it made me laugh. It made me laugh. I don't know. I will say this though: yeah. she either she's leaning down or she's much shorter than Nick Fuentes. Okay, I'm a big fan of Nick Fuentes' sister now. Who knows? That would be hilariously ironic. That was so funny. That was so funny. Oh, wow. So we should also talk about something else. Uh, this shit. <laughs> yeah, Jesse Smollett, uh, Ju- Juicy, Juicy Smollett is uh, in court right now getting charged for the... For the, filing a false police report. Faking a false hate crime to garner attention. Um, Which includes filing a false yeah. police report. And during the during the trial, J- J- Jesse Smollett says, he asks white prosecutor, don't say the N-word. Because <laughs> the prosecutor was reading his texts. <laughs> and so, Juicy... Smollett interrupted his own courtroom grilling to make an interesting request that the prosecutor does not use the N-word in full because he found it offensive. This guy looks like uh, Red from that 70s show. He does. <laughs> he looked like Red Foreman. Imagine Red Foreman just dropping the bomb at, uh, at your trial. The Empire actor stopped prosecutor Dan Webb, who's white, during his line of questioning during cross-examination Tuesday and flat out asked the guy to stop repeating the slur while quoting messages Jesse had sent to the o- Osandario brothers on the day of the alleged attack. Oh, the brothers that uh, that he got to fake attack him. He right? paid a check to to attack him? Yeah. He paid them off with a check? Smollett interrupts special prosecutor Dan Webb as Webb was reading aloud one of Smollett's messages that had the N-word in it. Smollett said, can you spell or say the N-word out of respect for every African-American in this room? You've been saying that word a lot. He's been reading your texts a lot. Yeah, it's, it, it's funny. It has to be said for the record. It's it's funny like. because because. These are all texts that he's he said they have uh, inserted for evidence, and this lawyer is just trying to like, you know, to hold the the legal law here. Jesse said in court. Uh, oh shit! Oh, we just got a full court sketch here. You've been saying that word a lot, and I guess apparently, um, Webb made a compromise asking that Jesse read the messages himself, which he apparently did. One uh, one of the messages Jesse read himself was from. Abimbola, which said, uh, N-word, finally made it, just landed, ha-ha. After Cross, Jussie stepped down, the defense rested its case. Closing arguments are expected to begin tomorrow. That's, uh, uh, it's... As you know, Jesse's on trial for allegedly making up the attack he says he fell victim to and faces six disorderly conduct charges for what prosecutors say amounted to falsifying police reports. 
He's denied the allegations and has maintained his innocence throughout. And then there's another interesting Jussie Smollett uh, one. This? <laughs> yeah. Jussie Smollett says he did cocaine and masturbated with the alleged attacker. <laughs> After days of uncertainty, Jesse Smollett took the stand in the case surrounding an alleged hate-filled attack perpetrated against him in January 2019. According to authorities, this attack was orchestrated by Smollett to drum up both press and sympathy. But throughout his testimony on Monday, Smollett asserted that he was a victim and did not organize the attack, though he knew the brothers who executed. Yeah, he, he was just randomly racist attacked by people he already knew. Yeah. There was no hoax, Smollett said on the stand in Chicago court Monday. The prosecution had alleged last week that Smollett had contacted the brothers and laid out the plan to the pair. The three then were caught on camera in footage shown to the jury in an alleged dry run. And Smollett, they, had, they videotaped a dry run for the attack. And Smollett reportedly gave them $100 they said was for supplies. According to them, he also gave them $3,500 to execute it all. Jesus Christ. In his testimony, Smollett said the training was for nutritional <clears throat> and training advice as he hoped to slim down as some of the set of Empire had remarked about his belly. He said that text messages referencing being on the low and, dis and discreet meetings like the one caught on camera were about nutritional advice as some of the supplements were illegal in the U.S. I'm a black man in America. I do not trust the police, Smollett said, of why he didn't and would never call the police. His creative director, Frank Gatson, did. I'm also a well-known figure at that time, and I'm an openly gay man. I'm an acteur. I want to play a boxer. I want to play a superhero. I want to blow stuff up. This is from his testimony? Yeah. This is ridiculous. The moment I got beat, I became a... Of 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 f word who got his ass whooped. Can we agree he's probably just mentally ill? Maybe. <laughs> the moment I got beat, I, I became a gay slur who got his ass whooped. Uh, it's it, it's no. It's like that's what you were trying to become. We all we all were like behind you, like this is horrible, and then we realized you put on a little uh, magic show. And then we're like, oh, he wants to be David Blaine of the, the, the race baiting. No, thank you. David Blaine. No, thank you, David Blaine of race baiting. We're not a fan. Mm. Smollett went further saying he met Ambimbola Osundaro in 2017 at a uh, club. Huh? The pair were working together on Empire at the time. Smollett said they did cocaine together and then went to Steamworks, a popular bathhouse in Chicago. Oh, my God. There he said they made out. He said in another meeting they did more drugs and masturbated together. Osendario previously denied that the pair had ever been sexually involved. When asked if he regretted the drug use, Smollett responded, Of course, I'm sitting here in front of a jury, in front of my mom, having to explain it. I'm a black man living in America. I'm afraid to call the police, but I love doing illegal drugs. Didn't he walk into a police station with a noose around his neck? He had he had a that... noose around his neck saying that he was strung up like when they I think they might have came to him. OK, I don't know if he walked into the police station like that necessarily, but I'm not exactly sure. I do know that if I was uh, if I didn't trust the police, I wouldn't be doing cocaine. I, 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 come on. I can't I can't be trusted around the police. Why am I going to give them a reason? Why am I going to give them a reason? I guess that's that's where he draws the line, though. He won't call them, but he will just do a bunch of cocaine in public with a guy he just met and then jerk off with him. And he, Good didn't, times. he didn't admit at first that he knew the people who attacked him. He made it sound like it was like a random. He originally said they were white MAGA guys. Then he called. Then he changed the tune to pale. <laughs> and then he changed. Oh, I know those guys. And he's like, oh, by the way, now, when I said pale, I meant it pales into comparison. All the jacking off and coke I did with these guys. Right. <laughs> Uh, so uh, elsewhere in his testimony, Smollett said that he refrained from providing information to police after he found out they didn't believe him. He said he learned this from CNN host Don Lemon, who texted him. Man, these CNN hosts really like helping out people going through some legal shit. 
Yeah. We had a Cuomo who helped out That was Cuomo. for his brother, though. But yeah, but now we have Cuomo helping Cuomo and Homo helping Homo. Oh, my God. Bang, bang! That was a terrible joke. But is Don Lemon gay? Uh, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure the joke was on point. It was it was poor taste, but it was on point. Elsewhere in his testimony, um, Smollett is charged with six counts of felony disorderly conduct for making a false police report. He faces up to three years in prison, uh, but if convicted, will likely be placed on probation. Ah. Uh. Juicy Smolay. Damn, dude. Juicy all you ever Smollet. all you ever want to do is do coke, jerk off, and make people have sympathy for you for getting beat up by a bunch of magas. You should have never written that check out to those guys to 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 play the part. You should have paid them in cash. So then you this have was, a paper trail. This was the podcast that Fuentes was on. Yeah, right? this is uh the podcast Fuentes was on with that girl Sydney Watson, and they had Kyle Rittenhouse and uh Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, in the podcast interview with Sidney Watson, who was toe-to-toe with Nicholas Fuentes, said going to Kenosha may not have been a great, well, probably wasn't the best idea. About 24 minutes into the podcast, you were here on the Right Wing Network, The Blaze, on Monday night. Co-host Sidney Watson told her guest Kyle Rittenhouse that it was kind of impressive that of all the people that you shot at, you killed probably two of the worst on the planet. I wouldn't say these are two of the worst on the planet. They're not great people. They're dead now. They can't tell their story. She was referring to 36-year-old Joseph Rosenbaum and 26-year-old Anthony Huber, the men whom Rittenhouse shot and killed in Kenosha, Wisconsin, in August 2020. Conservative commenters have highlighted that both Rosenbaum and Huber had criminal backgrounds and served prison sentences. Last month, Rittenhouse was found not guilty on all charges related to the shootings. Congratulations, Watson said Monday to Rittenhouse. Good job, you Rittenhouse 18 responded that the killings were nothing to be congratulated about. Good job, Kyle. Like, if I could go back, I wish I never have had to take somebody's life, he said. Watson, who later said she doesn't condone killing people, <clears throat> asked if Rittenhouse regretted going to Kenosha in the first place. Rittenhouse lived just across the Illinois border in Antioch. Well, hindsight being 2020, probably not the best idea to go down there, Rittenhouse said. Can't change that. I defended myself, and that's what happened. Yeah. I'm really glad he's not on these platforms yeah. giving himself a pat on the back for doing this. He's he's showing, you know, it, I wish it hadn't happened. Yeah, and, and he, he, he's, he's getting he's, a lot of hate, too, so this is hel- this is helpful to him. Yeah, he's free and clear right now, though. He could embrace all the, the, the people that have been supporting him this entire time, <laughs> and he's choosing not to. Yeah. That's, that shows some character. You know, hopefully there's a future for this kid that doesn't involve anger and hatred. Rittenhouse's remarks came just over two weeks after a jury acquitted him on all accounts, including homicide and attempted homicide. Rittenhouse joined armed civilians in Kenosha, carrying his AR-15 style rifle as peaceful protests gave way to riots in the wake of the police shooting of Jacob Blake. The teenager's case sparked a sharp debate about the line between self-defense and violent vigilantism. The prosecution claimed Rittenhouse escalated the situation in Kenosha by showing up armed. The teen's legal team argued Rittenhouse only fired his weapon in self-defense. I think, uh, you know, all this other stuff is information that we've heard a bunch of times. I just I think it's interesting that he's, you know, he might be on the blaze. They might be asking him to come in, but he's not playing into their talking points. Right. He's, he's showing a. Well, I mean, that's who's asking him to come on. Who yeah. else is asking him? Yeah. <clears throat> so I, I think that that's that's the best direction he can go now. Uh, that everything's behind him. I was hoping he'd go in a direction like that. Yeah, it's 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 a nice it's 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 a nice start for the rest of his life. Hopefully, you know, something better comes out of all this terrible shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit! Bye. So we got like four minutes left. Uh, everyone, please give the stream a like if you would be so quiet, kind to do so. If you guys want to take your finger and just slide it next oh, to that finger, like a like like a like a like a ritterus button, and just finger that like a ritterus. That's nasty. Why did I even try and make that work? It didn't work. It didn't work at all. Hmm. Just give a serious little poke to that like button. Please. Please. 
Yeah. <sighs> Alike. I want to thank everybody who's hung out with us tonight. Uh, we've got, we had some Nick content that was like very important to watch, I think. That was just so, like, we, we watch, we try to do too much of them in a row, but we, we definitely, I, I, we had to come back today. I took those three hours or two hours and edited them down to like, yeah. Yeah, because well, there was two. It was a two-hour conversation, and we probably brought in what about fifteen, twenty minutes of actual family. footage. Family, family, family. Yeah, if Victor, anyone wants, cheers. To, thank you. If anyone wants to start the tip train <clears throat> for the next family. few minutes here before we leave, family. Oh yeah, and for those of you that are what what level is it? Uh, twenty five and above. Twenty five, and then on Thursday we'll be doing the post show for ten dollars above yeah. and channel members. For those of you that are twenty five and above, it's our booking committee, so we need to have you in the Discord. You guys get to decide show. what we're doing. Like you get what... to help f- shape the future of drunken peasants. Yeah, uh, it's a very powerful role. Yeah, that a select few get. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, John F. Kennedy was a twenty-five dollar patron. Uh, he was Fidel Castro. That's why they took him out because he knew too much. Fidel Castro was a twenty-five dollar patron. That, same thing. Vladimir same Putin, thing. a twenty-five dollar patron. Well, that goes without saying. A lot of power. A lot of KGB. power here. There's a lot of power. Um, and then fifty-dollar patrons, you get all that and a T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, the hundred dollar patrons, uh, you guys get all that, and you get to uh, hang out with us for an episode. That's always fun to have yeah, you guys on. It's cool. I saw uh, maybe jackpot. some new hundred, yeah, jackpot on a hundred dollar level. That's awesome. It's gonna be good times. Oh yeah, yeah. I did not have sexual relationships with that like button. I did not inhale like that button. like button. A lot of people don't know this about the like button, but it always consents. Always consents. Treat that like button like that black lesbian treats Nick Fuentes' sister, according to that meme. <laughs> according to show. it. According to that meme that I was sent mid show. According to that. <laughs> ah. I've been waiting for a girl like you to come into my life. Somebody send that clip directly to Nick Fuentes. I want that girl, Nick Fuentes, to come on a Drunken Peasants podcast and sing a couple of songs to some alpha male degenerate liberals, okay? Long-haired degenerate liberals. Come talk to us, and we will we'll put a little grit on your, your, your shoe, Papa. We'll dirty up a little bit, make you feel like a man. You'll walk away. You'll walk away a new man. Step on up. A new man. A new man. Step on up, Nicholas Fuentes. Come on the Drunken Peasants podcast. Your your fans want you here. Yeah, and they they always give us shit for you not coming on here. They want it's you here. It's almost like it's planned that way. Oh, are you saying there's a, a Fuentes conspiracy? There always is. To keep him off of there's our also show? The ones that, there's also the ones that pretend like they don't watch him. It's like, well, you, you literally, like... You just show up when we talk about him. Like, I've never seen you around before, before we talk about Nick Fuentes. Yeah, and Nick you're Fuentes. defending Nick Fuentes, but you're not a viewer of Nick Fuentes. That's weird how that worked. Come, come but you know fly, who he is. Come fly your plain white opinions into our two hours. <laughs> yeah. Feels pretty good. Feels uh, pretty, pretty good, man. Pretty good, man. All right, everyone, link in the description. Join the Discord, uh, especially if you're a $25 patron because we are going to go to this booking committee thing. Uh, Let me get into that room really quick, and then we'll... uh, It's the Hangouts room. I am currently in there. What's up, Matt Pitt? I see Matt Pitt in the chat. Uh, Can't wait for Tommy C. to come back on, too. Those of you that ever watched Shot from the Point. Or uh, other other spots with Tommy C. He's been around for quite a while. And he's been on our show. And we want him back. So I can't wait either. Good to see you, Matt. The show flew by. I know. It was like we just started the show. And now it's 
just over. Yeah, it is over now. All right, guys, uh, those of you that are $25 level patrons or above, come help us form the future in the Discord right now. We need you to be there. See you there. Bye-bye. Thanks for stopping by. In the beginning, there was nothing. And then there was the Drunken Peasants Podcast. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. Drunken Peasants. From the strangest corners of the internet. Gonna get TP'd by Billy and Ben. You know where you can find them at. Get ready cause they're gonna kick your... Drunken peasants, drunken peasants, drunken peasants, drunken peasants.